I'm, I've got purpose in a different direction and my purpose is not to just be everything for everybody, but be something yeah. for you. Exactly. And, and what so you want. that's a, we all need those people. hundred. Yo, absolutely. Yep. Right. I agree. And, and a lot of people are like, we well, should never do anything and expect anything in return, <clears throat> which is true, but it's not, it's not about, I expect something in return. It's that if I'm going to give you this much energy, mm-hmm. I need to at least get like 50% back or more. I you know, know like, you want the investment in return. Right. Yeah. That's, I don't, you don't have to match it at the moment Yeah, because right now I might not need it. Yeah. Right. But let's go ahead and put that in a Rolodex. We'll leave it there. Yeah. When it's time to step up. And, right. Like, oh man, can you come pick me up? Or, oh man, I'm having a tough spot with yeah. this. Hey dude, can I borrow 10 grand? I want to go to the casino. <laughs> right. like, like, you say I'll, no. Hey, it's like, how are you not going to match my energy? Me, let me hold 10. <laughs> yeah. I'll turn it to 25. Yeah. And, and if I'll I don't, you, you cover my 10. Like it's really, <laughs> it's no big deal yeah. it's only yeah. money we'll yeah more of it. exactly you know, like I don't, it's fine <laughs> now that we know how you feel about it I'll <laughs> catch you yeah. oh absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. investors <laughs> possibly you possibly you <laughs> yeah. welcome back to the podcast um unfiltered with shane and taylor shane and why is your name first i don't know it's usually because i think I introduce it, right? Well, I'm the one who even like put it in the system. I don't know why. I, ch- I guess I love you more than me. <laughs> Maybe we switch it every time. <laughs> Just like every once in a while. They're like, you're introducing it. Eventually they're like, hey, you've changed your name too many times on yeah. the podcast. You've introduced this one. Well, poorly. You've tried to introduce this one. So unfiltered with Tay. No, it's Shane, Shane and Taylor. Okay, Tay. Shane and Taylor. There's no Shay and Tay. That's, that's personal. Okay. <laughs> Nobody knows that line. All right. <laughs> Unfiltered with Shane and Taylor. Yes, yes. So this is episode three. And uh, actually... We're back. Yeah. By unpopular demand. By unpopular <laughs> demand. <laughs> uh, we brought really the only people that watch um, the podcast. They're actually on the podcast tonight. Hey. So, yes. <laughs> um, so one thing that's kind of cool to touch on is uh, the, our, our scenery is a little different than last time, huh? Yeah, it is. Um, same table. Not, ex- <laughs> not the exact same table, um, but same table. Uh, we loved the one that we were doing so much, we went and bought another one. The original was my dining room table, and now we have an official podcast table. Yeah. And then uh, I spent the last you know week and a half by myself just building this beautiful <laughs> studio. I don't I know that's where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, credit where credit's due. Taylor and I were supposed to build this studio together. Mm-hmm. My weak immune system decided to get sick. Wink, wink. I just didn't want to do the work. And Taylor he was literally, literally sick until I'm like, hey, the last coat of paint is on. <laughs> and then here I come to check it out. But, I mean, it looks amazing. We've, we've still got to add a little bit more furniture. We picked up a couple chairs, a table. and Carpet a, goes in sometime if, this month. If Lowe's Sometimes in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got a mini fridge. Yeah. Excited about that. Anyone glass that front. Joins? Yeah, glass front. Anyone that wants to join us can get free water and <laughs> Red Bull and all that stuff. But it looks great. Lighting's great. Yeah, feels I'm, good. I'm excited. And it sounds better. It does sound way better. It sounds a lot better. I love it. So, um, I'll, since I started this thing, I'll let you introduce our guests. Okay. Well, today we got two very large... <laughs> Personalities. <laughs> yeah, personalities. Um, I can dig that. Yeah, got that makes t- sense. two very large gentlemen. I um, try. Two great friends of ours. Um, seems to be easier to grab friends right now. You know, um, <laughs> the famous people haven't called us yet. But no. honestly, two people that I've been excited um, since day one uh, to bring on to the podcast. And so without further ado, I introduce Blaze and Huck Huckleberry Finn. Yes, I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. It just spontaneous combustion. It felt right. <laughs> it did. Did you feel, that? Did you feel that energy that just came through? <laughs> came in hot. Yeah, oh, you did. That's what like. What's up, boys? What's oh, up? Nice, Are man. we? It is Friday. You gotta adjust your mic, please. It is Friday. Mm-hmm. A little too hardcore. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. I was adjusting my mic actually. Mm. My bad. There you go. <laughs> is that what that was? There we go. There got it. Go. I got it. I got it. I got it. It is so Friday to the though. show. Yeah. Which I'm excited about the weekend, although I haven't been at work because I've been sick. So <laughs> super it's happy. Been, it's been Friday every guys, day. Like let us be here. Like that's. I want to thank you guys for that for sure. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty dope. 
Absolutely. Pretty dope. Thanks, yes. guys. Yeah, I'm just just thankful for our friendship. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, for sure. Just right? spontaneously combusted from one meeting and just sure. burst into this beautiful flower. Absolutely. Beautiful <laughs> flower. No. Right. Each petal with just great colors. Yeah. Divine energy. Here we go. <laughs> I think we've talked about this. Um, I was not on this podcast, but yeah. You know, show me, show me your friends. I'll show you your future, kind of thing, right? So, pretty selective with who we hang out with on our personal time. Um, met Blaze through. I mean, really, it was just more of a social media friendship at first, and then we're like, we gotta, we gotta meet up, and just struck this awesome friendship. And then, hey man, you should go get your hair cut by this awesome barber. And I'm like, well, I don't really trust a lot of people with my receding hairline. So <laughs> <laughs> I was like, but I'll give it a shot. And then. <clears throat> Met Huck and just yeah, and he lived like or he like worked at that time, like a block from my house. Then right. that's the crazy part, right? Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> you could throw hey, a stone. Glad but... I met you guys. By the way, I'm not gonna be here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I remember, like second time on the cut, you were just like, yeah. I mean, it's because uh, I just got done talking about how cool it was that you were like right by my house, and you're right. like. Uh, uh, sorry about that. By the way. By the way. <laughs> trust me, it'll be worth the drive. <laughs> That's yeah. definitely something that I want to talk about on the podcast, too. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll get to that because that, uh, it's a vibe for it's sure. It's a vibe. Yeah. It's called a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are the lyrics. So I think, uh, Blaze, if you just want to kind of tell a little bit about who you are, what you do, what your passion is, and then we'll kind of. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. <clears throat> Blaze is the name. Blaze Adaya. Blaze Adaya. Blazing in hot. Um, I am me. 32 years old. <laughs> crushing the game. Um, always hustling. Always crushing it. Um, I'm a car salesman, which is weird. Never thought I'd say that. <laughs> Definitely never thought I'd say that. <laughs> well, what, 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 do you, what do you sell, Blaze? Um, I sell high-end luxury vehicles. High-end. High-end. Top shelf. I sell minis. <laughs> Cars that he could probably I curl. Saw. Right. <laughs> I just want to hear. I love it. I'm Blaze, and I work at Mini. Yeah. <laughs> We're not Mini. <laughs> it seems kind of like a practical joke. Like, hey guys, I'm here to apply you, for a job. Do you remember Mr. Incredible? From the yes. Incredibles? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I picture when Blaze steps oh, into him. There's yeah. a story the, behind the, that. The There's video, a story behind that. The video that. in that is hysterical. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. It's great. Um, yeah, but I sell minis, man. Um, that's how me and Taylor met. Yep. Um, um, yeah, work at mini. I also coach football, which that's what I love. That's what I'm passionate about. That's awesome. Um, Where do you coach football at, Blaze? coach at Rose Hill High School. There you go. Rose Home Hill. of the Rockets. The alma mater. Ding, ding. <laughs> you gotta love them. There you go. Don't hate on them. I'm not love them a little bit. Love them. Um, love them. Yeah, love those boys. Love my kids. Um, Coach O line because uh, we're the best. Um, not a lot of clout, but uh, for sure, prove, prove yeah. no doubt. Absolutely, <laughs> that's a rhyme. Um, and other than that, uh, working out and <laughs> making good relationships, hustling, trying to figure out my uh, position in this world every day. So I didn't realize you were a gym goer. That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> Not until recently, I guess. <laughs> Boy, it feels like that. So you talk about the O line. I've noticed too on social media. It's like you you don't just go coach, and mm-hmm. um, I mean you seem to on your off time too. Like I've noticed, you know, take him to the pool and and take him. I think was it chicken and pickle you took him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, chicken so and pickle. It's, yeah, it's um, pretty cool. It's not just you know I yeah. go there three o'clock till five. You seem pretty involved. Yeah, I I, I appreciate that. Uh, no, I love that part because um, someone did that for us when I was in college. We didn't have that in high school. We didn't have that. This is my dad, but we didn't have that. Uh, you know, my dad wasn't excited to go like, you know, let's go hang out on Sundays kind mm-hmm. of thing. Just, you know. Well, it probably also helps you're a little bit closer yeah. to them. Yeah, approaches differently. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm you're closer not, in not, age too. Yeah, right. You're not the head coach. Yeah. You're, not, you're also not dad. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a player's coach. Right. 100%. So people love you. For sure. You bring that um, energy and those kids are like, right. yeah, I want to be just like this awesome, right. big, giant guy. Yeah. Who doesn't, what, 16-year-old doesn't want that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, which is, I love that part. Right, absolutely. Um, it's exactly. like so, every, so I decided this year, two years ago, every Sunday we'd, I'd try to go do something with them. We'd go eat or um, we'd just meet up or go, like we went um, bowling or just weird, you know, mm-hmm. you know, off-center things. We, well, we went we just uh, cooked out at the park one time, they just hung out, I went to the pool. But a little stuff like that, I mean, just a little team bonding for them, just being able to get closer and closer because uh, for the position that I coach, 
they can only be successful if they're a family unit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would just try to bring that culture, that BSD culture. Um, <laughs> but I just, you know, that um, being able to give kids that confidence and, you know, watching kids grow up and, you know, always being so tentative and not be able to literally coach people how to talk to kids to order food at the, at the dinner table. Absolutely. You know, things like that. But kids that, you know, just need a little push along the way. Young men to gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's part I love. Right. Yeah. It's probably a big deal to you, but it's more than likely a massive deal to them. You know. Yeah. Absolutely. Like it's uh, it's definitely selfish of me. I feel like because I get like so much in return. Yeah. You know, I love that stuff, but yeah, the, you know, I've got kids that I've coached four years when I first started about four years ago that still, you know, talk to me and hit me up and if they need something they know they can call. So. Yeah. You gonna give them a shout out now or? Oh, who are you give a shout out? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Noah Boltikoff, my boy. That's right. Go ahead. Yeah. Go Frogs, my man. Um, <laughs> yeah, Noah was like my first. Uh, yeah. That's why yeah. I said we should talk about it. Yeah, Noah. Noah Boltikoff. We want to dive in now. We can dive into it now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, Noah, I met him and his father uh, four years ago. Yeah. Five years ago. No? Yeah. Wow. Holy cow. Yeah, he got old. Yeah, we're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Jesus. That's another podcast. Right. <laughs> Boy. When do we talk about our age? <clears throat> um, but uh just met them off chance, started training Noah. It's like as a personal trainer. And it kind of evolved into I was coaching this position and then they ended up coaching they coaching at the high school that he was at. Mm. Uh, that he was going to high school, so I kinda of coached him football and then ended up getting let go there and, you know, just kinda of continued that. It turned it turned into a relationship with the kid and his family. It wasn't all our players like you know, it's one of my kids. Yeah, you know, um, I don't have kids, but I feel like if that's the kind of the relationship you have with that kind of right. thing, yeah, yeah. for that, sure that bond. Yeah, for sure. And um, yeah, I love that kid. Love him till the day we die. Take a bullet for him. Now he's down there at TCU. Yeah, he's down there Dang. playing football. Playing football because he's, he's coached him. Like that's just the part he's forgetting. He yeah he wants to be. Big and bolsterous in life and in person, but like yeah. talk about the things he's done. Yeah, he took this kid who didn't know how to look you in the face and have a conversation with you, and he turned him into a young man, a respectable young man. We That's just amazing. trained, we just trained with him over the Christmas break while he was up here, and it was fun to you know put the whooping on the young kid because he <laughs> thinks us old old fat guys don't have it, and go work him over in the gym, and then he you can really see the appreciation in his face. Yeah, not many young men are like him, so he is pretty special in my book. I think he's got a chance at uh, going to the NFL. I think he does. They they just had like a big. Uh, we just had a big coaching change at our at my alma mater at TCU. So it's gonna kind of see where how he places with. He, has, he has, hasn't even talked to the coaches yet. So I mean, it's kind of one of those deals. Yeah, big we'll see kid, all talent. That's for sure. The most athletic kid I've ever seen, especially with that size. And yeah, hips and everything. I mean, just and kind of built how to turn how to flip the switch. And taught him how to do that, and that yeah, was, that was nasty right, too. Right. Which you have to be, you have to be pretty and nasty. Right. Maximize your athletic potential in every step. Yeah, we <laughs> had to teach him how to quit being a bitch. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's. I mean, yes. if we're gonna be honest, yes, that's yeah, what we're, yeah, we're putting dicks in the <laughs> right. Like, hey, yeah. did you play football too? I. Well, that's how I met Blaze. <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. see, now we're we're digging. See, I now met, we're digging. I met Blaze because Blaze's father was my football coach uh. in high school. Dang. So I knew Blaze when he was out there running around as a little kid. Just waiting for dad to be done. Yeah. So third yeah. grade. Yeah. And so that led into like me having a really I met him again. He came <clears throat> bebopping in. He was working for the Wichita Force. Oh yeah, that's right. The <laughs> arena football team, the one that just got kicked out of its league. Hey, <laughs> just throw that out there for you guys. We uh, almost uh, some we got approached to do work for them one time, and yeah, they just got. It must be why nothing <laughs> continued because <laughs> they got kicked out. And uh, yeah. so he come popping into the barbershop when it was over here, looking for people to sponsor. You know, doing what you do to try yeah. and hustle and get that. And yeah, mm-hmm. I was like, <clears throat> I know this. I know him. Gee, like, <laughs> look at the head on that. Like, I know this guy. Started chit chatting at the shop right there, and it was like, ah. Coach Fultz, okay, yeah, your yep. dad, your dad was my football coach, and he's like, ah, oh, okay, oh, okay, yeah. Like it wasn't his plan the whole time. Right, <laughs> and essentially from that moment, like, I mean, 
Mm. It was that. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> the scheme, <laughs> the it, scheme it continues. Like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. And that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, ooh, I mean, those are. Yeah, it's gonna happen. It was. Yeah. It was real quick because it was Love. right before uh, the Christmas party for Supplement yeah. World. Shout out there. Because right. uh, yeah. then we had a great time. Love at first we sight, had, yes. if you will. <laughs> we danced our little hearts out at the Christmas party together. Oh man! Oh man! That was a night. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Definitely wasn't a uh, a red light night, but man. <laughs> <laughs> but still, so, what a great day. Yeah. Yeah. And so That's it was, uh, I was, he actually trained me for a little bit at the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Until, up until like your first comp that you did. Right. Yeah. And then we'll just kind of turn into. Yeah. And then we switched. Yeah. We just trained together. Yeah. yeah. We did switch. Yeah. yeah, you may be the strongest Midwest strongest human, man, <laughs> the strongest team I've ever been. Right, <laughs> and sure. it just—I mean, the gym is what really always drove it, and then it turned into. How do I say this? He needed a big brother. Mm-hmm. He needed someone other than his dad to try and push him in the right direction, and I could reach yeah. him better than anybody could, because I actually sit and listen to him. Like mm-hmm. everyone else is in awe because he's big and he's loud mm-hmm. and he's boisterous. So nobody ever actually listens to what Blaze wants or what needs, mm-hmm. or they only listen to what he wants and not what he needs. Yeah. Well, then Big Brother comes along. And it's like, uh, uh-uh, this isn't what we're doing. You got so much potential ahead of you. Yeah. Get your together. Come on, let's go. And we took off. We took off and we went running after that. And yeah, been we ain't sprinting st- ever since. Yeah, bro. we ain't stopped since. Well, it's interesting because like most of like what influence you are in so many people's life is you're kind of that big brother or mm-hmm. that like father figure, yeah. really. Mm-hmm. So well, I, I think a lot need... of that from him is rubbed off into me too. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stuff that he's you know just kind of taught me innately. Mm-hmm. Wait, hey, I mean, we're gonna be honest. We have some tough conversations sometimes That's with good. each other, like for sure. If and the same like, always goes like, call me on my shit. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not my friend. You're just letting yeah. me live this lie. Yeah. I think I said it yesterday. So you're not my friend. To be, I'm not your best friend because my yes man. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like last night, we didn't want to be in the gym. It was like, no, we're doing it. Let's get it done. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I think it's natural. I, I don't know whether it's the size, but I think it's mm-hmm. natural for people to take advantage of people that are kind, right? Mm-hmm. Something I tell my daughter all the time is like, kindness is rare. Right. Um, Absolutely. Every night before she goes to sleep, I tell her, you know, be kind always be kind it's a whole more than that but part of it is that um and so people will take advantage of you if you have a kindness which you do oh you absolutely know, uh, for sure. i've watched it happen yeah they'll just they'll keep take 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 and, mm-hmm. yeah. and i think that's why you know my my circle has got smaller and smaller over the years because i just it drains we, you yeah we were just you. talking about how we just talked about this too yeah we did i mean like right before you asked us to be on here together we were just having a conversation, you know, sometimes those late night, late session conversations get a little long. So it's just, right. Gym sessions. <laughs> and it's just like, all right, guys, here we go. Like, we got to make sure that we stay tight. We don't have right. energy to burn on people that don't matter. Yeah, exactly. People that don't want me to win. Therefore, I don't want, like, I want you guys to win as bad as I want to win. Mm-hmm. And I know that's vice versa. Yep. And that's why we work. That's why mm-hmm. we're family. Yeah. But if you're not into this that deep, I don't even got time for you. Yeah. yeah. No that's, more. That's, that's something. So much. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's something that we haven't really ever talked about on here. But um, even when Shane and I met, I was definitely that guy that just like, I just give, 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 give. And I had, I had a lot of friends. Right. Like, and there was one conversation Shane had with me. It was like, he named off a list of people. Like, how, how much have you done for this person? And then, okay, what have they what have they given back? And I'm just like, it was like reality check. Yeah, that's man. a gut check, right? Yeah. And I was just like, dang, I reevaluate evaluated my entire life. And I remember that that moment was like game changer for me because even like who I am as a person, like I was still was me, but then I like I shifted in a sense of like, I'm I've got purpose in a different direction, and my purpose is not to just be everything for everybody but be something yeah. for you exactly and, and what so you want that's a we all need those people hundred yo absolutely yeah. right i agree and, and a lot of people are like we well, should never do anything and expect anything in return <clears throat> which is true but it's not it's not about i expect something in return it's that if i'm going to give you this much energy mm-hmm. 
I need to at least get like fifty percent back or more. <laughs> I you know, know like, you want the investment in return. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't. You don't have to match it at the moment. Yeah, because right now I might not need it. Yeah, right. But let's go ahead and put that in the Rolodex. We'll leave it there. Yeah. And, when it's time to step up. And, right. Like, oh man, can you come pick me up? Or oh man, I'm having a tough spot with yeah. this. Hey dude, can I borrow ten grand? I want to go to the casino. <laughs> right. like, like, you say I'll, no. Hey, it's like, how are you not going to match let, my energy? Let me hold ten. <laughs> yeah. I'll turn it to twenty five. Yeah. And, and if I'll I don't, you, you cover my ten. Like <laughs> it's really, <laughs> it's no big deal. Yeah. It's only yeah. money. We'll yeah. Make yeah. More of exactly. It. Like it's fine. Now that we know how you feel about it, I'll catch you up. <laughs> oh, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Investors? <laughs> Possibly you. <laughs> Possibly you. Yep. Yes. Yes, yes. You know, I think that's I think it's important and and I just happen to have gone through a lot of stuff prior to meeting Taylor that I had realized that. And I think that's what mentorship is, friendship, all that is mm-hmm. the ability to pass down knowledge, wisdom, et cetera, that you have you have learned. Um, if you hold on to it, you ain't helping anybody out. You've already helped yourself out with it by learning it. So passing it on is important. And he's done the same thing to me. And sometimes I can get a little boisterous on things and you put me in check. And <laughs> I think that's, I think that's important in a friendship. Yeah. So you were talking about the gym. Yes. The gym. The gym. I've learned don't ever call you guys bodybuilders. No. Um, that's, no. Don't, don't do it. I am, yeah. I am ugly, bro. Yeah. I am, <laughs> I am not pretty enough. Made yeah. that mistake when I went to tag <laughs> plays on Instagram one time and I was like, do I put bodybuilder? He's like, no, you do not. Um, I did say it like that too. Yes. Oh, man. No, you do not. But so strong man, is that, is that the correct term? Yes. Yeah, what Blaze does is strong yeah. man. Okay, and and what I do is powerlifting. Powerlifting. Okay. So. Strength the, sports is what we just call it in general. Strength sports. Strength sports, yes. Yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of what I do. Mm. Yeah, Functional I mean, fitness. Yeah, I just do mm-hmm. anything that doesn't involve strength because I don't have any. <laughs> so, <laughs> if it's not push-ups, I don't want them. Yeah, exactly. If I can't do flips. But but um, do you think that f- was football that natural transition for you guys into strong sports? Uh, oh, I I actually power lifted in high school. We had a power lifting team in high school. And what was cool was, what I liked about it is I have a weight class. So I'm no longer trying to compete with the strong guys at the gym. I'm trying to compete with the guys that are my size. Mm. And in high school, I wasn't this big. No. <laughs> I was about Taylor's size graduating high school. So you're still pretty big. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Do you freaking hear? <laughs> Jacked. Yes, you trying sir. to buy some of these or try some of these, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to use that tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, that's, no, that is in the Rolodex. Uh, you got to. That's in there now. Oh, man. I don't know. Do you fit in this doorway? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, that's what... So being little your whole life and working really hard to not mm. be little... You finally find a sport that you do it long enough and you're not little anymore. You just keep doing that. Mm-hmm. All I got to do is eat. I don't have to do it pretty. I don't have to. I just have to eat mm-hmm. and keep lifting. Time, if you keep doing this, no matter what, mm-hmm. you're going to get better at it and you're going to get stronger. So I don't have to have any special skills. I just had to be too dumb to quit. Yeah. So eventually... I met my wife and I wasn't even 200 pounds. Mm-hmm. And now on a good day, I walk around on a wonderful, like, you know, 245, 250. And that's a great feeling. But it was that drive that I never wanted to be little again. Mm-hmm. That I was able to just keep going. And then everyone. So in the gym, what you learn is everyone goes to the gym because we all have trauma. Mm-hmm. Yep. It might not all be the same trauma, but that's what bonds us all together. Yeah. But there's some stuff. And so, the demons out. Right. And so mm-hmm. I don't care why he's there. He's there to let his demons out. I'm here to right. let my demons out. But we matched energies mm-hmm. like immediately. Mm-hmm. We get loud. We get boisterous. We guarantee we always have a good time though. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be fun. But, and that's, and that's what drove it was neither one of us wanted to be the one that got shown up in the gym. Clearly I don't, I can't lift what he lifts. I try. By God, it doesn't mean I can't outwork them. Right. And so we would try and match each other. I mean, we were doing leg presses, sets, of like five sets to like 35 a piece with yeah. six plates on each side. <laughs> just laying on the floor 300 afterwards. 300 day, we call it that. Yeah. That, 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 oh. 
yeah. thought that was a good idea. Mm-hmm. I love those 300 days. reps of everything. Right. We got it. <laughs> we can do it. There's, I think there's I think there's a picture out there. It's just I, I think it was a crime scene. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> I always my my hardest thing. To, it's weird. So I started off chubby kid. Um, I've always kind of had a little extra, even through playing soccer and stuff. It's probably like I, I grew up and played like Olympic development program and stuff like that. But <clears throat> it's always a little slower, just because I never really cut the weight. Um, and then. I joined the Air Force, and I started off my first week. We had to run a mile and a half. I was ran it in like twelve twenty. By the time oh, I graduated, boy. I ran it in eight twenty. So right. I found out that okay, I can run, and it's just from like having soccer lungs and legs mm-hmm. and stuff. Aerobic um, capacity. Yeah, exactly. And and but then I continued running, and then when I got out, I kept playing soccer. So I'd run like eight miles in the morning, go to work do PT at work then I'd run to soccer practice play soccer and then I'd run home and I got down to like 156 good night. and then yeah it was ridiculous and then I couldn't mind you I'm like six foot I had a 28 inch waist and then I found the gym right and man I tried I to get guy, I tried to get big I did my best and it wasn't until I deployed that I managed to get up to the biggest I've ever been I've been there fat twice sure and jacked once and it was 209 out of boy i hated it it was hard I, to I, breathe. Couldn't, I couldn't breathe probably I couldn't sleep i couldn't run I, there was so many things that i just was not enjoyable yeah. but then when i would cut down to like my usually i cut down to like 185 man i looked good. shredded mm-hmm. just looked shredded, juicy bro. Yeah. yeah, and you got the right height too. So it's right. Like, yeah, but then I went from this this chunky kid to now it's way easier for me to to cut up hey, than it know, is for me to people always get large. Say, people always say, "Oh, women are like fine wine." No, <laughs> homie, I'm looking around the room. <laughs> you the know. fellas are aging like yeah. Yeah. like we Real. look pretty compared to where we looked five years ago. Oh, bro, <laughs> that is yeah. that's for sure. I mean, there's <laughs> I got pictures and I'm not showing yeah. them on here. No, for sure. <laughs> I'm, about I mean, to show, I'm about to find me a picture real quick. You guys oh, keep talking. Man. <laughs> like the funny conversation sometime you'll have to have with my wife is ask her if me 15 years ago she ever would have looked at it. she's like god no not at yeah. all no way baby yeah. hug yeah Absolutely. baby hug like i look at pictures of me <laughs> you're like i wouldn't be with me right i'm like, <laughs> I'm like man i do kind of look sick I, 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 I am pretty skinny like, yeah i'd good. pass it by two right <laughs> so, good night where's Boy. your mustache <laughs> oh man okay i got this picture we can put it up on the screen put it up on this, the this screen. is me in England, I don't even know how many years ago. Look at my baby self, Ooh. dude. I got Ooh, curls girl. for the girls. 10 out of 10, <laughs> I would smash. The, I would look just at let that. you know that. <laughs> look at me. 10 out of 10. Oh, little baby me, man. Miss <laughs> Davis, you got a problem with me? <laughs> look like a, I know what I'm going to dream about tonight. <laughs> Bro, for real. <laughs> look like I got, a, two, <laughs> look like I got oh. a toupee on my head. <laughs> <laughs> a toupee. <Yeah. laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so we've talked a little bit about like the weightlifting, but Huck, tell us a little bit about who you are day to day, what you do. That kind of, we kind of gave it away a little bit, but tell us, tell us your passions. Tell us. So, I mean, my passions are y'all, man. My passions are life. But what I do is I'm a professional barber, mm. uh, the barber shop at Standard Issue, nine twenty four East Douglas, which Doc, come see me. Hey, there we go. Shout out. <laughs> Shout, Shout out. out. Hey, I'm, I'm going to be shameless on it. Uh, so I started off. Oh, man. Wow. All right. Fast forward to the, to the stuff that doesn't matter. Mm. And I became, I got to an opportunity finally. Oh, I can go to Barber College. I've wanted to do mm. this. I, and, you know, whatever. I illegally cut hair for a long time. Yeah. Without a license. Oh, no, no. But don't oh, tell no. anybody. I did too, but it was my own hair. So, <laughs> sinner. sinner. So I got to the point. I was like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of good at this, and I, I really like it. Like, I enjoy the idea, especially of being able to do this for a living. Yeah. My best friend at the time, Dave Tingley. He's gonna watch it at some point. So shout out to you, Dave. I appreciate it. Is that your camera? I don't yeah, that's know. his. That's, that's his. It's gotta okay. be my camera because yeah. I am not tall enough yeah. for that one. Nope. <laughs> just making sure. No, he's good. And uh, sorry, so, just winking at no, my camera. Absolutely. <laughs> and he was like, "Well, Huck, you know, 
Go get your license. I'll give you a job. Bet. I got you. You got enough faith in me to do that. All right, I mm -hmm. got you. Barber College was rough. That is like jail. Like, get real. Like, you walk in there, how long you got left? Like, no one enjoys being there. It's not a good experience at the Barber College here in Wichita, Kansas. Got a lot of shanks in there, too. Uh, well, mm -hmm. everyone's had a little time in there. <laughs> Just about everybody in there has got a little time. A couple teardrop yeah. tattoos. So, I mean, that was rough because Barber College is a full-time gig. Like, it's 9 to mm -hmm. 5. Really? Yeah. That's insane. Plus Saturday, plus every other Saturday. Oh, yeah, I'm also a husband and a dad of three. Oh, dang. So I got to work. I got to yeah. hustle. So, are, so are, you, are you cutting people's hair in there eventually? Oh, absolutely. And it's are, not are, even eventually. It's like, cool, you have a 30-day <laughs> orientation class where you watch people cut hair and you learn. Mm -hmm. Is that place making money? Are they charging people to come in and get haircuts? $6 a haircut on top of the twenty grand I pay them. And then are you getting it's any of that money? Shop. <laughs> I get nothing. Dang, hoping, that's immediately where my mind went. Hoping like, and praying for a tip. <laughs> getting to the point as you're an older senior in the class or something that I ain't cutting hair. You tipping? No, I ain't cutting your hair then. You finally yeah. get to that point because you do. You pay seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars to be there. Mm -hmm. Really? Half yeah. the time they didn't have the products Wild. behind the bar for me to use. I had to get my own neck strips. Dang. And then they charged people six dollars. To cut, for me to cut their hair and they keep that right and then on top of it you get i don't remember the number you get x amount of hours of sick leave essentially you're allowed to miss at barber college and then every hour after that they charge you ten dollars an hour that you miss what? what and at the time they were the only spot in town only spot in kansas for me to get a barber's license so it was like right. all right well this is how bad i want to do it is i'm willing to put up with this I would work all day at Barber College, get off Barber College, go bartend and run a bar mm -hmm. from 6.30 at night till whenever we were finally done. Yeah. Go home, sleep a couple hours, back at it. I mean, it got to the point where me and my wife didn't see each other from Thursday until Sunday. Dang, I was going to ask about that. Because that's... of the way the schedule was, it'd be the weekends. Well, that's big money days. Yeah. At the bar, well, oh, it's also my Saturday to work at Barber College, so I'd work Friday, get home 4.35 o'clock in the morning, got to be back at Barber College at 8.45, do that till 3 o'clock. I might go home and catch three hours before having to be back at work at the bar at 6.30. So mm -hmm. it was a year of that. Yeah. And it's a long year. It is a long year. Also, in the middle of that, I got married. Oh, man. Planned a wedding, a, a full-blown masquerade formal ball. <laughs> Yeah, Dang. like we went big. We were, all right, we're going to ball out. We love each other that much. We're going to let everybody know. Yeah. And so it was like I knew I wanted to do it, and I knew I had a great shop to come to. I, I mean, Dave out here had really got it down. Like, yeah. The shop's busy. You come in, I make sure you've got good hair. You're going to make money. Yeah. You're going to do well. And I first started, and I was doing all right. I still had to have a second job for a while, making pizzas, AJ's at the alley. AJ's yeah. shouting out everybody. Hey, <laughs> Matt sponsors hey, today. They, they, every one of these AJ's. people I mentioned, every one of these people I mentioned, gave me a shot, gave me a hand, saw that I was struggling, and knew I'd work hard for it. So I do appreciate everybody who's reached out. No, that's yeah. good. Because without people like that, I wouldn't have made it. Like right. that's how close me and my wife were. Sometimes, like, cool, we paid rent. I'm not gonna eat dinner tonight, but you guys get to. Like, Damn. yeah, to the point now where I'm at now. So it's it's pretty awesome to see it, but. I knew this is what I wanted to do, and I knew mm -hmm. my way to make my family grow, my way to take my passion and do something with it good for everybody yeah. was this. So I was like, all right, so no when matter did, what, I can't stop. So when did you, when in your life did you decide, like, I'm going to cut hair, I'm going to be a barber? Oh, man. Um, I was still working at Dispatch as a 911 operator, and I had just taken a horrible call. It was one of those, just turn your mm -hmm. gut. This is, all right. And it was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to get my barber's license and I'm going to get out of here. Yeah. And that's what I knew. Yeah. I can't, I couldn't keep doing that. I need to, I'm a giver. I need to give mm -hmm. life. I need to give energy. I need to give creatively. Yeah. I worked in a spot where all I heard was everything getting taken away. It was, mm -hmm. I, it was turning me into someone who I didn't like who I was becoming. So I had to get out. I had to have that creative release. Yeah. I mean, people say I'm mean. People say I'm scary. Which, if you're on my side, bro, I got you till the end of time. Yeah. Yeah. 
nothing but a teddy bear. So, like, the destructive side, I don't like. Mm -hmm. Don't like showing that side. No, not at all. <laughs> but I, that, that's what it was turning me into. Well, it's good that you realize it, though. A lot of people, they just... It's, it's scary to move on, do it, something different, oh, and when, get a struggle to get to where you are now. When my director fired me, because I didn't quit, he fired me, I thanked him. Thank you. I never would have quit this job because it was I had to have a job with insurance mm -hmm. because of being a dad. Right. So And it was steady. I wasn't going to get fired. I was really good at my job. So if I didn't want to be there, it was going to be something I did. Yeah. yeah. That's a tough spot to be in too. Like, you know, this isn't where you belong, but you're like, I'm not like I have responsibility. So sometimes just it being kind of taken from you, it lunges you into that. I think you know that from personal experience. <laughs> I understand that life. <laughs> you know, that's, that's how I get my perspective on mm -hmm. how I, that's how I judge you as a character. Like, are you willing to do what you have to do? Yep. To take care of your responsibilities because look man them kids didn't ask to get brought in here right i gotta do whatever i gotta do yeah now if i get to be happy and do it hey it's a win-win exactly but you know that's why i didn't become a barber until later in life i'd wait till my kids were older where i was in a more of a situation to... right mm -hmm. there's just so many things that you know as you make as i make friends and i even watch <clears> some <throat> of my family go through it that i joined the air force at like 18 years old 19. you know and I never have to worry about health care. I, I mean, really have to perform a criminal act to not have a job anymore. Right. But I think the thing that helps me understand is that I've watched my mom go through a lot of stuff, you know, work in two jobs. And, you know, she didn't have a college degree working her way up from, I mean, sleeping at my nan's house, grandma's house. Mm -hmm. Um to a tiny crappy apartment to an, a little bit better of an apartment to a really nice house. And then she ended up getting a divorce and then had to get rid of the house. And we started all over again. Right. And, and then work watching her work two, three jobs, always presents under the Christmas tree, always getting birthday gifts because she's constantly working. Mm -hmm. That always sits in the back of my mind. I haven't had necessarily the same struggles, but mm -hmm. I always look at people that have, and I'm like, I, I don't fully get what you're going through, the personal pain, but I get it from the sense of like, I watched my mother go mm -hmm. through that. It resonates. Though. Yeah, it does. It, it does resonate. Yeah. So like going through all that, I mean, that's, that's tough. And then now you're successful. And yeah, now yeah. I was given the opportunity to be down at well, the spot where I'm at. Yep. That is, I mean, truly the universe lined up and just made yep. it perfect. Like I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah. And yeah. it is a, I might need another barber Chill in another spot. month or two. It is. You what? I might need another barber in another month or two. Well, I can tell you this. I ain't paying $20,000 <laughs> going to prison right. just to come yeah. help you out. So well, I will Photoshop a license for myself and come cut some hair. Bad, 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 perfect. Ho yep. Hopefully he already has his license because uh, we just you just trashed <laughs> barber school. Yeah. Well, ain't and nobody no, going to no. get it now. No, the good news is, is now we're not the only – that's not the only spot around town. There's a couple other spots you can go now and actually – That's good. Like Paul Mitchell now has a program where they might not be getting as much cutting experience, mm -hmm. but you're getting the education. That's good. Because there's nothing that you're going to learn cutting wise that a, a crash course in the barbershop is not going to give you. Yeah. yeah. Like I can teach you to cut hair. I need to go to that school, get the education, and get the state license. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the hard part. And yeah. then COVID messed that up. They're having a hard time getting models people going and get their hair cut right. for the students to get practice on yeah so when i was uh when i lived in hayes i was good friends with the owners of uh the hayes academy of hair design which one uh one of the owners was always trying to get me to he's like dude you would be great at cutting hair I'm like <laughs> I, I would agree you would. you would be i think it would be fun and i literally almost like took that step it wasn't barber school it was just hair school yeah hair school yeah. um but I was always asked to be a model, like well, just like you. <laughs> no. Got that was, beautiful long, yeah, thick hair. Right. And I think what Luscious. what really, <laughs> what really the like voluptuous, <laughs> magnificent. I think what drew me like them to me God too like. is like maybe I mean I connected with them well, but uh, I was always like trying new things. Like I went through all the emo stages, like all, right, all the well, different hairstyles. Well, I mean, to be a barber today versus what it was, you know, for the barbers growing up, like right. I would have went to like. 
No, man. Now we've you've got to be fashion forward. You've got mm-hmm. to know what's going on. You've got to be with the trends. Yeah. And if you're not, got to be able to cut the Doctor Phil. Right. You got to be able to cut the Doctor <laughs> Phil. You also got to be able to, you know, do a gentleman's haircut. But you also yeah. have to be able to, because these men are going to ask you, "What should I do?" Yeah. I've had to explain to guys like, "Well, I think you should probably wear." Oh, you're going to this kind of event. Well, this is what you should wear, and this is how you should wear it. Yeah. That's. I mean, it's a big deal. You come into my shop. I'm yeah. at your service to make you today's gentleman the best I can. Yeah. So. Chop it up. Uh, yeah, and and it's a lost art as well. Yeah, it really is. Being a gentleman. That was something that, say, when I came to the barber shop here in Andover, mm-hmm. which I'll say, like, I mean, because I didn't know you. Sure. So for the only reason, like, I one, I trusted Blaze. He said, hey, go check out my boy, Huck. And he said, well, it's his boy. So I'm like, I'll go check him out. And then I realized it's right there by my house. Right, like, right next door. If it would have been out west, I don't know that that would have been a thing. You know, but it's like, I went there. And one of the things I noticed was was that like, dang, one it felt like kind of like a tattoo shop at first. Oh, for, oh man, we hear I walked in. The, we I'm hear like, all the time. Okay, I like this. <clears throat> and then uh, just when <clears throat> when I was getting my hair cut for, for the first time, this other dude, like I don't know the name of the red bearded dude right right across from you at that Clinton. time, Clinton. Clinton. Yeah, yeah. So Clinton was there. Chair was open. This dude walks in, doesn't do anything. He just takes his jacket off, goes, sits down, and I'm like. Oh, like you're, there's no waiting on the side. It was like a different kind of vibe. And it was like, he came in, sat down, knew what he was doing. He was out. Like, I think it was like five minutes yeah. max. I'm like, what? Like it was what Efficient. I had always. Yeah. And it's what, it's what I had always like pictured as like a barber shop. So right. like, I like the, I like the vibe of like, if I need to get in and out, I can, but also there's conversation. And like, I've sat in like, um, hair salon chairs and like I had a friend that cut my hair for a while and like we could have good conversation. But if I go sit and talk to people like just the random hair converse, like they're, it's just awkward. It's, it's just, just like small talk. Yeah. It's nothing. And I can, there's no substance. Yeah. And I can definitely like, I can, in those situations, I can become very introverted. Like, I'm just like, we talked about that the other day. Sure. I'm like, I don't know how to start a conversation <laughs> right now. I can be very extroverted when I need to be. Sure. But like in those situations, it's like, I don't know how to stir a conversation. And it's, that was something that was just so natural. Like the moment we started, like you just cutting my hair and we talked about life and we have, you know, life that we can relate on, which is really cool. Absolutely. Well, and I mean, for me to do my job right and to get you the best you can be when you walk out of that shop, I was not going to be the first haircut. It's not going to be the second. I'm going to have to learn you. We're going to have to build Mm -hmm. a relationship. Mm -hmm. Now I know your vibe. So it's easy. Like you come at me like, Hey, should we knock this down? Absolutely. We should. <laughs> should we cut all this off and go with the mustache? <laughs> like and I, don't, yes. I, had, I had zero hesitation. Like I, I know your vibe. I know your look. I, we have developed something and yeah. to be good at your job. I feel like that's what I have to do. Yeah. And if you don't have that passion, you don't have you're, you just cut hair. You're not a barber. You're a hair yeah. cutter. You're not a barber. Like, you know, it, 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 oh, go ahead. No, something that was really cool the other day is I heard, uh, so my kids now are at the stage, like they have their own cell phones and they'll be FaceTiming their friends. True, it was FaceTiming his buddy Tiger, which he's staying the night with at his place tonight. But he literally said he was going to get a haircut from his barber. Like, <laughs> I'm over in the other room like, did he just say my barber? Yeah, I'm like, going to go get lined up by no. my boy Huck. Yeah, bro, for real. And then like Tiger's like, what's a barber? Like it's, yeah. it's a big deal. And that was something that you connected with him like right away. Absolutely. Talking about like how's, how school, how was your day? How was your holidays? Like he's a human being. Yeah. He's just a smaller man. Yeah. And if I treat him like that, then he grows up like that. Exactly. And then he grows up knowing what the level of respect is supposed to be. Like, this is how men talk to each other. This is what appropriate men talk to each other. Like, mm-hmm. and then he doesn't have to go to sport clips, right. you know, <laughs> bonus right yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. Look fresh to death. Yeah. Right. The great well, thing about yeah. the place is just it. You, you either, it's great for you if you've been to Barbas your whole life, like I have, mm-hmm. or, I mean, I brought in, I'm trying to think how to explain this. My ex-wife's now husband. Still wild. <laughs> yeah, um, great this, dude. Yeah, like, he was cool. Yeah, Absolutely. great dude. Like, cool. I feel like I'm buddy, buddies with him now, which most people will be like, "That's weird." But yeah, great dude. Like, he'd never been to one, ever, but had just as good of experience as someone that had been to one, you know, consistently throughout their life. So uh, it was eye opening for him. But he had a blast. He was talking about it the whole time, you know, whole ride home and for the, mm-hmm. most of the rest of the night. So yeah, it's just it's 
it's great and and it's nice to have that in our little town of wichita mm-hmm. you know yeah I, I love it the platform it gives me to yeah try and spread the good wealth and the good knowledge yep. and mm-hmm. one yeah. thing one thing you always say you always say it about your work is put the haircut first absolutely mm-hmm. if you don't have respect for that then i don't have respect for you in the profession absolutely 100 yeah. percent, and that I, I, I do stand by that mm-hmm. another thing too it's not just like hair I think I know you're big into it now, probably because of Huck, but like the skincare stuff too. You know, everyone thinks of that just like that's that's a woman's thing. I need you guys to look good, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 it's spreading, and I love it. And, and guys are understanding it, and we're getting our own lines of skincare. And I no longer have to use your wife's frou frou smelling stuff or whatever. Like it's becoming a thing for us. Yeah, we got some burnt like metal lark oak wood. Yeah, like soap going on. Right, and it's, it's, oh, I can smell it. It's, it's magnificent. It's amazing. It's great. <laughs> Smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> and, and, Leather know, bound books. I always tell I know people. <laughs> first time I'll have a guy in my chair, and and they get the works, or they're gonna do a full face, and it's like, cool. I'll get you down. I'll shave you up. Line the beard up. Whatever we're doing, and then without telling you, I start putting on some facial moisturizer, and then when I do that. I hit you with another hot towel, and they're like, "What was it?" And I'm like, "You don't know why your wife looks better than you do. She uses lotion, homie. Yeah. She takes care of herself. She takes a minute and says, all right, I got this. We need to make men doing that a regular mm-hmm. thing. I know I have self care Mondays. I know Blaze has self care Thursdays. Pedicures, bro. I swear go, by him. I get a, I go see my chiropractor, who yeah. is an amazing human being. I." The other Mondays, I go and see my massage therapist or maybe <clears throat> go get an IV. I go do mm-hmm. something for me for however long. Yeah. I, I always, like every other, I think it's every two weeks, I go always, I'm going to get a haircut. Mentally gonna, or physically, I'm going to feel better yeah, right. today. Massage or um, what's the other thing? Uh, um, the crowd chambers, stuff like that that mm-hmm. we have now, which is, not, which is so dope. Yeah, but there's a couple new ones opening up here soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've just seen it on. Is it restores again too? I think so. Shout out Heather. (laughs) I'm not. I'm not sure who it. it, I see it on my um, my LinkedIn a lot. There's a new dude in town. He's opened up one on the west side. Plans on one on the east side. That's cool. Yeah, I'm I'm not uh, sure of all the details, but I'm working on finding an acupuncture guy right now, so I'm excited Mm -hmm. about that as well. That stuff works, man. Yeah, Yeah. Right. No, I mean. Stuff. I am a big fan of any and all active recovery methods. Mm-hmm. I had a really messed up. I felt okay. Embarrass myself. <laughs> okay. Embarrass Brace myself. Okay. Okay. So there's a plane uh, Air Force has called a C-17, and it is just a monster of a, a beast. It is a beast, right? It looks like a big ass whale. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> there was a guy that was in uh, Antarctica and thought it was smart to get on top of the plane to check because it's part of our inspection uh-huh. not realizing that you know it's cold it's icy um, and we didn't have to mandatory wear um, these harnesses but if you were within the black lines mm-hmm. well dude slipped luckily as he went down the edge of the plane he pushed himself off smart kid fell down broke both his ankles messed up messed himself up pretty bad so then they made it mandatory to wear these harnesses but we hadn't been wearing them for so long that they were just, they were trash. So mm-hmm. I get out there and I clip the first clip in and they had caused so much slack from just sitting there. I tripped over and when I tripped oh, over no. the harness, my foot, as I went to plan to save myself, easy step, that got hooked on the other harness I was supposed to clip <laughs> in behind oh. me. So then I fell onto my shoulder oh. and it just... Crumbles. Well, then I, oh. in agony, I roll off of my shoulder, but that happens to be off of the wing. Oh, so there's <laughs> Shane just swinging. So then it comes down and it catches me from hitting, but then because they're old and rusty, as I go up the second time, it pops out and I land back on this shoulder. <laughs> anyway, long story to get Holy to. Um, I'm in Seattle. On a, just got back from a deployment and I went to a chiropractor because I was just hurting. My shoulder always got like this crazy tension in it. And she's like, well, I do some Chinese medicine too. I'm like, okay, what is this? Some voodoo, voodoo <laughs> stuff, you know? So she's like messing with it and she's not really touching me. So in my mind, I'm like, this is the dumbest thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Um, and she's like, put your arm out. So I, I put my arm out. She's like, I want you to think about five negative things right now. I was like, okay. <laughs> 
you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking my, <laughs> this is the dumbest thing I've ever no, done. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> right. What one. Yeah. Yeah. Thing? yeah. I'm number thinking one, we're here. Number two, my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, just like, um, why, number three, why, wake, why did I wake up this morning? Yeah. <laughs> so I go, I go through the five. I'm like, I'll give it a shot. I go through the five negative things. All right, I want you to think about five positive things. I'm like, I'm almost out of here. <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm not uh, paying you. I'm yeah, leaving. exactly. So then she's like, okay, now think of the, the one positive thing out of those five. And I want you to focus on it. I want you to really just think about it. And I had a daughter at the time. Mm-hmm. I still do. But I had, <laughs> I had just... She hasn't left. I like just, an she was right there. had a daughter at the time. She I had just <laughs> had a daughter. There and so um, I just, you know, I'm focusing <laughs> on her. I'm trying to focus right now. <laughs> yeah. And so okay. I'm focusing and focusing. And I ha- I'm not kidding. I have this massive knot in my shoulder. And I'm focusing and I'm focusing. And then all of a sudden, it just goes. And it's gone. I can't explain it. Nobody touched me. Nothing. <laughs> it's just effing gone. Did you look at her like. No, I legit looked at her. I was like, <laughs> it's like, what the F was that? <laughs> and she's just she, And so what, what? the best way, I have zero knowledge on this other than what she said. Dude. She said that. Voodoo. We, yeah. She said that basically we have these proteins. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And I do. cannot. Yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. I cannot explain it scientifically. Something. I didn't even look it up. Sure. We got these proteins in us that can come from like yeah, negativity. Stress causes proteins. A lot of stress. And then obviously endorphins from happiness and things like that. Can, sure. Can, CNS system gets fried. Yeah. So and Steady release. Just crazy. You know, I've never done acupuncture. I have had a dude when I was in Japan almost put his... He almost made my shoulder blades touch. Ooh. He pushed my back so <laughs> dang oh, hard. Oh, oh, yeah. Blade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now I got a very gentle chiropractor in Derby. So great dude. Nice. But yeah, I love all that stuff. Right. Like, you know, taking care of yourself. Mm. It's important. You know, witch voodoo stuff. <laughs> hey, hey, whatever, whatever clears your mind. Yeah. How, how did the rest of that conversation go? Like, what did you just do to me? She explained the proteins <clears throat> thing. And I'm like, well, how do I not believe this? Like <laughs> the knot in my it shoulder just is, right. is How do I is explain gone. the science to what yeah, just happened? Yeah. And she's like, that that's just, just happened. Yeah. She's like, that's yeah. just, you know, that's kind of like Chinese medicine. It's real. Like people don't think it is, but it is. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Will it come back? I mean, it never really did. But doesn't matter though if it's the placebo right. effect or not. Either way, you feel better, right? But if you can get rid of a knot with your mind, imagine what mm-hmm. other things you could do with your mind. So, <laughs> um, I've been trying you, for the last never, ten years. Were you never thirteen? <laughs> <laughs> things get weird, uh, right? Like there's a lot of things you can, we can will into just, that. You're just sitting there in the middle of like science class. <laughs> just hanging out hey, eighth hey, grade and like, all oh sudden, my god photosynthesis yeah you hear you hear a bird fly by and you're like yeah I could did that, did that turn me on <laughs> <laughs> yep yeah. well I don't know are we still breathing oxygen Fl- oh, okay flutter yeah. <laughs> whoa <laughs> so what's your plan with uh, with Minnie um, I mean I, I'm sure you're not going to say you're going to quit because someone might be listening but Minis. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, is it Endgame you for you? Not, like, what else? No, I mean, it's um, it was an opportunity. I was. Uh, it's a. It's a company. It's a Walzer. Is actually where I work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out Walzer. Yeah, we uh, both have Walzer. cars from there. Love yeah. that place. Mm-hmm. Big shout out to Walzer. Thanks for the Jag. Me too. Um, and it's the Jag. Uh, don't talk. Don't talk shit on Mini because that's what you sold me. So. <laughs> oh right. No, I was. I was yeah. going to hype it up a little. Okay. Bit. Cool. 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 Uh, cool, cool. Six, <laughs> six. 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 Um, <laughs> my wife wants one so bad. <laughs> oh yeah. I love it. The, the mini. The mini trend is hit Wichita for sure. Yeah. Um, so we have the giant. I, l- I like there. minis. I just feel like they're smaller than other cars. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not. Who you got a you got a dad mini. joke. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, you remember the one, dude? Hey, oh, hey, I told y'all I'm dude, coming on board. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, here yeah. I come. <laughs> Looks like it's We're unfiltered many, with <laughs> Shane Taylor and Hook. <laughs> Hello. I'll, I'll be the voice behind the screen. I'll just Google Is it everything. me you're looking for? <laughs> I can see it in your eyes. Sing it, Blaze. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> what did I just miss? What did my wife say today? Why are you playing with his nipples? <laughs> <laughs> Both teams are trying very hard. <laughs> we have some sports in. Every time Taylor laughs, he throws his head back, not and realizing how this. short his aux cord oh, is. It just yanks the yeah. sound system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Back to back, this. Back, back to this. Okay. Back to I yeah. knew this sound was going to go. Yeah, I forgot where we were. Minis. Be a professional. You work at Minis. Um, yeah, so um, Minis, 
um, kind of sprouted from. I was originally at Lexus, um, mm-hmm. it's this company Walzer that I'm Trader. at. Trader. Yep. Yeah, 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 it is what it is. Mini pays me now. So. <laughs> potato, potato. Um, yeah, I started working. I fell in love with them, man, and I fell in love with people. Um, mm-hmm. It's a different vibe, you know. Um, it's a it's a whole different way of like I think selling cars. I never thought I would be a mm-hmm. car salesman. Yeah, uh, but the way we do things, it's so um, it's so upfront, like streamlined. In, yeah, it's it's easy. Uh, there's no no I'm, hassle. Yeah, you work with you, work, you literally you work with one person the entire time. So if you're bad at this job, you suck. Right, you're not going to be around for very long. Yeah, you're a trash bag human being. Is that that's what that means? Right, because yeah, you're not at that point. You're not buying a car. You're, mm-hmm. You know, you're buying the person. You know, you're not you're not going to like people don't go to the car dealership. And, you know, they've already researched it. Right. Yeah, they, they come know, to you they, already know. They know that there's a yes. car there that they want. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you're non commission based too, right? So right. you don't have to worry about that. Right. It's just know. it's a very you know very open atmosphere, very uh, non pressure, mm-hmm. uh, super nice, and just it's literally just. Uh, I always say this, but always building a family kind of thing. Yeah. You know, welcome to, I, every time I sell someone a car, welcome to the mini family, man. Yeah. For sure. No, I mean, it's just different. It's no. it's fun because, uh, like you mentioned earlier, that's where we met. Yeah. Leo. So, I, <clears throat> I was literally in a like I was like I need to buy a new car. Like I'm just like it's time. I was driving a Subaru Outback. I loved the Outback. Mm-hmm. I like, I truly did. But I was like it's it's time for a new car. And my dad, um, like adopted dad, he. I'll get into that later. I'm like what adopted me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but he, <laughs> he, uh, he drove minis. He had three different models mm-hmm. and I just, I remember loving driving his minis and, uh, I was like, I think I want to try this out. And so, you know, I'm looking through everything walzer has got mainly cause like Walzer has a great reputation. Mm-hmm. Like they're good to work with. Yeah. And I worked at a car dealership mm-hmm. and I know that this car dealership was not great to, to work with. I know all mm-hmm. the tactics. I know all, all the crap. Um, but you're not going to mention the name of the car place. Anybody who knows me knows what car dealership I'm talking <laughs> like, about. Do you even need to ask? <laughs> I mean, Hello. <laughs> it slops up at the bottom. <laughs> website not to go to. Yeah. And, uh, so I roll up and I know, I knew what I wanted. Right. So that I wanted the blacked out mini, like that's what I wanted. And there it was, there was a used, 2018 mini right there mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden i hear somebody just like uh i think you said like how's it going bubba or something like something along those <laughs> lines like Blaise. yeah, that yeah. What's, up, bubba? what's up biggin i look <laughs> <laughs> what's up you big old <laughs> bitch <laughs> <laughs> what's up you good looking motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> exactly and, and i look i look up i look up and expect to like see up, a normal s- <laughs> a normal <laughs> size <laughs> Car dealership walking out, and here's Huck comes walking out, and it's like buttoned up plaid looking thing. You mean, mean Huck or Blaze? Uh, we, Sorry, Blaze. Yeah, what if Blaze? yeah so like? I see Blaze. <laughs> I'm looking at Huck, but I'm talking about Blaze. And uh, yeah, I see I see you come walking out, and uh, skinny jeans that were tighter than mine, Ooh. and uh, that checks out. Boots. And I was boots. like, he says, he says, boot. <laughs> Cowboy, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I was like, that checks out. I, <laughs> that I was like me. this guy. I like this guy. Can confirm. So, Can uh, confirm. yeah. So we started talking. And one of the things that I loved was that you were just down for whatever my mission was. Mm. Like it was not, you were trying to sell me on your mission mm. or what gets you to the next level or More whatever. Money. Yeah. We went through like looking at what it looks like to lease. Cause you were, uh, you had the Jag already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you were leasing, mm-hmm. and I had never thought about leasing until Shane, and he's like, here's here's some good uh, benefits to leasing. So, like, I'm looking into that. We're mm-hmm. we're driving it out, and I'll, literally then I come back to him. I was like, I think I want that original Mini. And he's like, all right, we'll get the paperwork done, and we'll, we'll just go from there. And it's like, I remember working in that industry mm-hmm. and how much of a pain that was. Like, mm-hmm. customers come back in, resign paperwork because they didn't actually get something approved that they thought they did. Like there was so many steps. And I remember customers literally being like either super frustrated or like whatever. Like I remember like calling up our, our customers and being like, Hey, like I actually need you to come back in and sign a couple more mm-hmm. things. Like oh. that would happen like three or four times. I'm like, I uh, offered to leave a vehicle through someone's front door over something like that. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Tell did. me about that. Oh, I bought a car 2018. Yeah, that's right. 28 years, 2018, something like mm-hmm. that. That's right. And uh, the beast. Yeah. Well, like, oh, it, you're, here's here's paperwork. You're done. Mm-hmm. See you later. 
like you said, five days later, they're calling me. Well, we need this. We need that. I'm like, what, yeah. what do you mean you need this? I gave this all to you. Oh, we've lost it. We can't find it. It's like, <laughs> are what? you children? Like, what is... And it got to the point where it's like, okay, if I come back up here again, I'm driving through this door. I'm going to leave the keys in it. I'm going to walk away and you can deal with it. Yeah. I was done. Ooh, wee, no way. I mean, yeah, super it's, frustrating. So deal with a guy like him? Yeah. yeah. How great can that and be? And so the funny th- funniest thing was like, we're sitting down. We're just chilling. Pretty sure at one point you had your boots on the desk. Like it was, we're just literally <laughs> Like that most chilling. of your Snapchats you sent definitely, during the day. <laughs> definitely a move. Yes. yes. So, yeah. 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 You know why? Because my freaking hamstrings in my ass. <laughs> Are on Hurt. fire just sitting there and like I've got to stretch out. Yeah. And so my go to is like when no one's around, it's just like yuppers. Yep. <laughs> and we built enough of a relationship so fast that it was just like, wow. Um, well, it was, like, when I was, it was when I was plugging your information. Yeah. And, and uh, it, was, it was Vahapa. Yeah. Um, and I was like, oh my God. That is I so really, cool. I straight up remember <laughs> so cool. what's your place of employment or source of income yeah. or whatever. And I was like, self employed. I own, yeah, self employed. I own Vahala Media Company. And he's like, you're Valhalla? Like, that's the worst. <laughs> You're Valhalla? Well, I was like, well. You guys did a video <laughs> yeah. for our, our gym. Well, yeah, and, and they took those pictures of me at my competition. And your, yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. At the gym, right. Yeah, at the, the videos gym. and stuff, so. Yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, that was my first moment of feeling famous. I'll, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's been my only moment of feeling famous. <laughs> no, but that's, not, <laughs> that's not true. I, I called Shane afterwards. I was like, so the dude that just stole me the car, like, you took a picture of him. We could flash the picture up right now. That yeah. is a pretty Let's cool picture there, yeah. right here. Like, yeah. here. I don't know which camera we're going to do, but everyone just kind of point up and like whoever, whoever we choose, we'll put the picture up. Yeah. And, uh, the picture where I almost died, but we'll get to that story. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll get yeah, to the story of the one. 300 yes. plus man sprinting towards me with like 500 pounds on his back. He's still coming. I mean, he's, he's still coming. He's still moving, but we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Oh, and well, I, if we're going to tell those stories. Yeah. It's, it's, it's going to be a good it's time. It's going to be a good day. I was yeah, we'll coming. definitely need an intermission. Yeah. The first time I met Shane. <laughs> The, the fear in that man's eyes. <laughs> I could see it through his sunglasses. Blaze, have you ever seen yourself running at you? No. Okay. Yeah, especially me. Yeah. I would exactly. stare the way, the way I a bear yes. in the face yes. with no weapons in my hand gladly before I have Absolutely. you run at me that way again. Oh, man. Yeah. Yes. I was moving that day, too. I know what he was capable of those days. Well, we'll, get, we'll get to those. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, we'll save this because this is really good. Yeah. <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing is awesome, but... Like, yeah, and I was just putting this information in Valhalla, and I actually had the picture that they took, this one, um, actually put it up. Uh, I had it blown up, and it's a huge piece downstairs mm-hmm. in my basement now. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's probably, like, it's a, it's, it's a big uh, canvas. It's six by four, I think. Yeah. It's huge. Um, it's awesome. I love it. Uh, it's, and, and he literally, like, was like, I, I printed this out. Like, I got to jump. And he's, like, <laughs> going through his phone. And I think, like, we've moved on. Like, we're, like, movie talking about cars later. And then, mm-hmm. like, he's like, you know, his here's dog. that picture. Like, and it was a picture <laughs> of his picture in his house. And it was it was pretty cool. Like, I remember that moment of just, like. Oh, yeah. Like, like it was instant connection. One, we connected just over, like. Before that, I guess. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We connected over skinny jeans. <laughs> and uh, and we connected over just, like. Smuggling grapes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, were just, we just had this, like, chill vibe. And it's yeah. is it Matt that's in the in there with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he was just super chill too. And then yep. we got to talk about just random conversation between all three of us, and and it was just like it was an experience that I was like, yeah, the, like I never realized that buying a car could be like this, you yeah. know. It's and uh, uh, buying a car doesn't have to suck. Yeah, my walls are experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you plugged oh. it! I just oh. got it. Oh, he got buying it. Buying a car uh, doesn't <laughs> have to suck, but yeah. it kind of does. Math yeah. and yeah. You're proud of that one. It's the state. <laughs> I went to the we same place. We love math. Proud of that. I really? went to the same place. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good. That's, Hopefully yeah. I wasn't the dude, one calling no, you. No, you I, dude, we're, we're here at episode three, and you've dude. already mastered episode 100 stuff. Dude, that was... <laughs> and the funny thing is, Taylor's usually not funny, but yeah, that was dude, <laughs> outstanding. So yeah, good like, they went over my head. Like, watch out Joe Buck's slide. <laughs> it's the, Elijah, the Elijah Craig uh, is helping me out. Hey, cheer, mm, cheers. Yeah, cheers. Absolutely. Yeah, my... um. Well, before I tell this story that individual that bought my car probably isn't going to watch this, right? Probably. No, I don't think he's with the company anymore. Would be she. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. My, my experience, although it was, was pleasant, um, my girl was not the happiest with the experience because the individual that mm. sold me, well, I guess leased, mm-hmm. like I had keys in between my legs. Ooh. Well, no, we, we, we'll we put those in the middle and like reach in between my legs and Oops. like put them in the middle and like my girl was sitting in the back seat 
I mean, needless to say, I leased the vehicle, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't the same. Uh, man, I, I, yeah. that, man. I, I would I would sell so many cars if I was a woman. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Uh, she 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 didn't wear skinny jeans. All. She wore skin tight gym tights. leggings no, tights, tights with wear. Yes. Yes. boots. Mm-hmm. No. Boots as well, though. She wore no. boots. So maybe boots. cowboy boots. Blaze. If, no. if we were girls, we wouldn't have jobs. We'd have only fans. If I yes. was a girl, yeah. if I was a girl. I, I would make so much money on OnlyFans. <laughs> we'll drop your OnlyFans link here <laughs> yeah. later. I can if I had one. <laughs> if I was a chick, because no one, who's going to pay for a dude? No, no, that's not what they do. It's not. I don't know. Let's ask Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> where you at, Aaron? Aaron, where you at? <laughs> but no, like it, it. But it is a good experience. Just, I mean, Wilson in general, in general, you know. Yeah, it was. It was great, and it was like, it 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 was interesting because like obviously I was coming in to buy a car, mm-hmm. didn't realize the steps of life that was about to like fall into place. Like, that's the universe. I rolled in and happened to roll in while you're there. Mm-hmm. Like, talk to you about Mini. We connected over Valhalla. Like next thing you know, you're like, yo, check out. I'm like, I'm literally talking about, I'm tired of cutting my own hair. Mm-hmm. Like you need to check out my boy, my boy Huck. And then I'm like, oh, he's an Andover. I'm like, okay, Andover. And then I didn't expect us to connect the way we did. And then right. it's like, next thing you know, you're going to Huck. Like I it's, did. yeah, this guy. yeah, <laughs> it was all perfect. Perfect. Well, I mean, a little we romance went, just fell in, well, right, fell in 100% place. The perfect storm, right? Yeah. We went full circle. Now we're standing we're there. Yeah. Well, we're this, sitting here at a table. Yeah. Show you my, show you my friend. Show you who I am. Right. Yeah. And yeah. now we're planning on taking over the world. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, Still, that is what we're doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's I, the plan. Subscribe if you want to see us take over the world. Abs- <laughs> oh, absolutely. Like, subscribe. This is going to be great. Chat. Set your alerts. Hit the bell notification button. No. So the plan, though. Yes. Um, what your oh, plan yeah, that, is? Well, that was the original what, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so mini, um, it's what I'm doing now. What I'm doing outside of mini is what I want to be doing um, mm-hmm. long term. Um, I like uh, like I love coaching football. I always want to have a part in that. Um, mm-hmm. I always want to be like doing stuff that we're doing right now. Um, you know, networking and marketing for people. Um, that's really my passion. I love doing that. I'm, I like I think working at uh, Walzers may be even better at that skill. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely like the sales side. Uh, just being able to like connect with people right away. Um, next, you know, <clears throat> first impressions are you know thirty seconds. And that's yeah. it. it's all you got. Shit yeah. on YouTube, it's three. Yeah, yeah. three seconds. That's yeah. all you have to engage somebody in a video, so, right? That's that's what we that's the issue we have, right? You go thirty seconds when it comes to videos. Even if you're telling a story with photography, you mm-hmm. know, you got to mm-hmm. put your best foot forward on. You know, ten photos. The first one better be a banger to keep them engaged. Yeah, and same on video, three to five seconds. I think is what they say. Yeah, same same thing we do in football with people's highlight tapes. It's yep. your absolute best play is number one. Yep. Yeah, and it's a quick hitter. It's not setting up. It's not. It's here's the first play from there. The snap. It is boom. It's yeah. one of the reasons we put something funny at the beginning of our podcast before the podcast starts. Right. So you go now. You know our strategy. So you're giving away our secrets. Yeah. So we're just drawing you in. You're welcome. You know, yes. all all hundred of you. Right. <laughs> hey hey, hundred right now. But you know. Yeah. I've strategically placed things here and there and yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're all gonna, there. We're going to reach a big, wide audience <laughs> because we're into some weird shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, I think we're just a, we're a very particular type of people. Yeah. We definitely are. And like, <laughs> very unique, but like... It's a vibe. Yeah. It's a vibe. It's very different than like, uh, you know, than what we grew up watching on TV, I guess. Like mm-hmm. the typical, you know, this friend group. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, oh, and also yeah. like this isn't saved by the bell. No, yeah. no, 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 no. And even just like men in general, growing up watching who men are right. on mm-hmm. TV. Like yeah. one, I uh, hate sitcom husbands or yeah, fathers. I hate it because we're just supposed to be dumb. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. good thing my wife's here yeah. to yeah. boss and, me and around. And love your yeah. dad. Like, and, like you'd love your kids, and that's mm-hmm. like the most top priority. And right. Like, and like for, for, forget about yourself. Like, yeah. You no, know, man, this isn't life. Life is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, here's struggle. a life lesson at the end of the of the episode. Well, and that's just it. They never struggled. Yeah. They, right. Never, not once during an, an episode. Like the kids might have a struggle, mm-hmm. or right? Something might happen to the family, but you yeah. never you always saw. Have su- you always have the superhero, right? Well, you never, you never saw yeah. dad like struggling. Like I don't, I don't, I can't do this today. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know how mortgage is getting made. Mm-hmm. I don't even know how we're getting dinner tonight. But I'm gonna get up and go to work. Yeah, like you never saw that in real life. But now yeah. today. We get to have stories and we get to talk about, man, I didn't want to do it, but I knew the only way I could. And so now you learn like, oh, I'm not different. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. does that. Everyone has their moments. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. We're, we're much more real now. And then I also think dudes have gotten better at celebrating themselves. Yeah. 
We don't have to have some. I think we've empowered people. I think we've empowered ourselves. I think that's visible. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, we're not. I don't. Confidence. It does we never have a problem? Like we used to have a problem with confidence. Right. Mm-hmm. And now, good luck eradicating that. Yeah. What's, yeah. What, what is it? Ann says, "Never met a mirror I didn't like." Yeah. We, we're, we're just always like, "You guys really like mirrors, huh?" Yeah. Well, yeah, when well, I was, I, a, didn't, I didn't used to. Well, when I was yeah. 140 pounds, I hated mirrors. Yeah. Didn't used to. I didn't like looking in the mirror. You know. So. And hey. I might not still be pretty, but I think I am. <laughs> I think you are yeah. too. And I think there's, it's been cool to see, like, I mean, at least the group that we like. We are, roll with our yeah, crew. Like it's men, like one, we're cool with actually admitting we're struggling. Uh, like, right. Because every one of us have just bad days. Like we're going yeah. through like, how the hell am I going to get through this day right now? Right. Like, how am I dealing with this? Yeah. And then mm-hmm. like, literally you hit me up on Instagram, like, bro, if you need to talk, like talk, like I, I was just like quiet for a while. And you're like, yeah, you're like, where, where hey have man, you been? You've been, you've been kind of quiet. And I'm like, actually, like, I'm like, mm-hmm. how does anybody even like yeah, he told me sense it, feel attention. it, whatever? That's yeah. why, because you're my friend and I pay attention. Yeah, mm-hmm. and because you're worth my attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I and think the thing what huge. makes it better for people to <clears throat> more confidence is back in the day. At least I remember when I was growing up. Like, what did you see on TV? You know, you've seen athletes, models, everyone. Mm-hmm you know, on TV was perfect and, and all that. And, right. but now a lot more is televised. You've got, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, dude, freaking Shia LaBeouf, even Stevens. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. he's in freaking transformers. transformers. You yeah. got the dude that plays, um, Rilo Ken. Is that the, is that the right name? Kylo Ren. Kylo, Kylo Ren. Ren. Got that Rilo little Ken. dyslexic there. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. you, you, you can't, I can't picture him being in movies 20 years ago. Right. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, goofy looking dude but now is celebrated as you know and as an attractive male a very very good actor mm-hmm. you know and you've got he's also a marine yep yeah, he was in the marines mm-hmm. um shout out military shout out military that's right yeah and then you've got you know taylor growing up emo he's got good charlotte his influence to see on tv oh, it's and, still there emo's, uh, emo's yeah. still there yeah. but there's yeah. a mustache oh, now emo's yeah. back bro <laughs> no, yeah. just emo's, now, not emo dead. emo's not dead emo's not dead there's just smile. such a there's such a variety yes. of people that are that are out there now mm-hmm. right, right? We're, we're accepting that it yeah. takes all types exactly yeah. which is that. it's mm-hmm. not always a good thing i mean you got people like the kardashians now everyone's got fake butts and all that but you know kim kardashian's out there helping people that are incarcerated and in doing amazing things suddenly now she has a platform do you know actually um i say that i'm usually not informed because i don't watch the news and stuff do you know that she just designed thanks ash for this because she showed it to me um she designed the u.s i think it's paralympics um, women's uniforms. Oh wow! Yeah, That's I did not know that. Yeah, they're and they're actually not. super stylish. Like That's they're sick. they're no, nice. That is. Yeah, well, and, but mean, not only just what they work out in, but she also did like their swag. The, this their sweaters and you know hoodies and all that stuff. Nice. Oh, so I got them in like full gear. Oh like, yeah, like and decked out like uh, like Ralph Lauren would do in Olympics. Yeah. I'll have to show you. I'll show you That's after dope. this. Yeah, I, yeah put a picture up. Yeah, let's do do it again. Another yeah. picture. Yeah, like it's just it's it's cool. Put a link That's here. so dope. But like that's kind of stuff that I think our generation strives for because we didn't get that when we were with that that kind of age and we're trying to we're trying to give that next gen um you know acceptance those yeah acceptance and or you know just hyping people up i feel like we give back a lot yeah and that's one of the reasons i say i stay informed by not watching the news i feel like the news from at Sucks least what i remember it does it's like everything's negative yeah like it's it's, no it's all negative it is, it's always negative yeah it's always trying to bash on somebody yep Whatever, like it's just it's gotten so old. That well, nobody's it's, watching it anymore. it's not even that they're necessarily bashing. It's it's I'm pitting you against you. I don't care what happens, but I know if you two argue, mm-hmm. I'm gonna sell stuff. Yeah, do it for the clout. That's all they're doing. Right, yeah. and like I don't, they're not reporting the news. They're trying to get you two to pin each other. Like yeah. if I say it this way, then it'll piss these people off. If I do it this way, that way, and it's just no longer are we given facts. No, you get more information off of a podcast. You get more information from. Things like, oh, what, man, I can't remember the guy's YouTube guy name. Uh, Phil, Phil something or another. God dang it, I can't remember his name now. Well, I used to watch him all the time, and he'd just do news clips from all over today's headlines mm-hmm. and then talk about it and break it down. for. So maybe if you're not the most tech savvy, he'd break the article down so yeah. you knew what it was talking about. Mm-hmm. Or if you didn't follow politics real close and you weren't aware of what everything was going, he would give you the full backstory and then read it to you. Man, it's going to bug me to think of his name. Or at break, I will Google that. Hmm. Man. 
But yeah. that's just important stuff. I've always gotten more knowledge off of that. Yeah. It's unbiased. Right. It's just reporting of, hey, this is what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember my uncle before he passed. I lived with him when I moved to the States. Uh, it was about, I was almost 16. I lived with him for about a year or so um, before I went crazy and moved out. But um, he would watch, he would come home. He owned a carpet business. He'd go do carpet crap all day and then you come home you sit down very um old school marriage like you know wife cooked cleaned so my aunt vera would you know make him food he'd sit on in his recliner he'd sit there all night and he would watch fox news until super late and then and then he put a western on black go and bad, white every bad. time yep so every time what go i away. noticed with fox news was he would watch an hour of it and it was like he would just press rewind and then the same thing would be on again. Different host, but the same news. Same it was exactly the same as the, as, the, as the first one, right? And same then, story, different. And then an hour later, it's the same one as the original hour. And I remember asking him, I was like, well, why do you watch this? I was like, it's this, you watch this for three hours and you just watch the same thing three times. He's like, well, because I like the news. He's like, but they've run out of negative things to say. So they just repeat it again. Did everybody else just hear that? I'm going to maybe check make sure my daughter's not dead. I was going to say, that was a loud thud. It, yeah. Oh, it was? It's noise canceling headphones are. <laughs> yeah. Fuego! A little, little thud. It, it canceled. A little thud. <laughs> they didn't hear a scream after. Right. So uh, I just want to make sure I wouldn't go yeah. crazy. But basically saying that, you know, they only report negative, And so once they run out of negative and they've got nothing new, and then they just repeat the they negative. Repeat that, yeah. Sure. I Which mean, just bat, trying to, you know, trying to be the hammer and just, bam, just killing you. Yeah. Instead of just letting you breathe. Well, and it, it goes to a lot of the marketing schemes that they go with. Notice you hear the stories of war on Christmas. Like, why do they use those words? There's a reason they use those words. And it's not to stir good feelings. It's to make you mad. Mm -hmm. And why do you have to make me feel a certain way? Why can't you just tell me what's going on and let me decide how I want to feel? Power of branding. We are talking about this before the podcast. Right. And take the flu or a common cold and give it a different name and... Right here we are. Now we got a pandemic, right? Uh, no. And I'm not that. Well, you I'm make, not yeah, that dude. Yeah, making money. Yeah, yeah, making up paper. Making up paper. I mean, but if we're willing to buy, I can't get too mad at people willing to sell. Yeah, no, yep. it's true. Exactly. It's fine to man, boys right. and girls. That's that's the hey. Always Welcome. looking at a nickel, trying to make it a dime. Welcome to capitalism. Right. <laughs> so you're saying that um, you know you want to take your skills from um, Wall Street mm -hmm. out and do something different. I mean, what's your I guess, like, what, what would be, like, your dream cliche word? What's you in 10 years? Yeah. You know, 10 years. Um, Let's go five. Oh, I'm interested in five. Yeah, yeah the, me too. I've been it's close. Interested. Yeah, my five-year goal is to have my own, um, I really want to have my own O-line company, um, O-line training company um, in five years. Um, but, like. Like, they hire you to come in and train an O-line? Um, no, it's like that, but like, uh, like, 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 uh, uh, you like, want your kid to be good O-line and send them here right. and I'll get like, them whipped um, into the yeah. like Kind of like how they train pitchers in softball and stuff. Yeah. You send to, okay. Like, cause so, um, so if you played baseball, if you were a pitcher, you would want to work on that specific skill. O-linemen have never really had that until the last probably five years. I would agree. Yeah. Uh, there's never really been a focus on it. There's never been, there's never been, just like we talked about, it's never really been celebrated. It's never been a better time to be an O line than it is right now. Oh, yeah, because like those dudes are. Quentin Nelson. Yeah, like they're killing it. I know he's going to watch this clearly. Quentin Nelson and his Colts. <laughs> he might. Clearly, he's going to watch this. So, yeah, will, for sure. The boys. We'll right. tag him. Yeah, tag him up. Um, but yeah, that's, I mean, there's never been a a focus, like, because, you know, that's a big deal for those kids that develop. They've just learned, hey, when we have a good game, my name's not going to be in there. Right. And the only clout that I'm going to get is from my boys right here um, or my parents. So that's the only people that are watching me, you know. Um, that's the only people that are watching me. Well, those are the only people that matter, though. Right. That's all that matters. But as a kid, it's you big. see the running back, you know, scored touchdowns, quarterback scoring touchdowns. You know, you're like, oh, that's cool. I wish I could do that. Um, but then, but now you've seen a big push to, like, this is popular. It's like it's cool to be a lineman. It's cool to be you and be a big man and be, you know, forceful, and still be you. You know, you don't have to change for somebody. You know, I think that's what's kind of the biggest thing with it. And I think that's what I want is to have that and to be like full time. You think uh, that's what you want? No, that's what I want. All right, now say it right. Yeah, say it right. Say it with your chest. Um, that's what I want. Do that. Um, you know, have that that business going, uh, and then marketing. Um, just marketing for like to be here. 
well, honestly, you know, we, we talk about it a little bit here and there, but yeah. down the road, like, I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, you know, that's what I'm passionate about. So like, doing those both full time and just loving it. Um, it's kind of the dream. So for sure. Yeah. Um, so I just still like, I think the reason why I did got into coaching in the first place is like, well, if I do it, I know it's going to done. I know it's going to get done right. Uh, I know that I'll do it the right way. Right. And I'm going to, you know, we're not just, we're not just teaching them how to block. We're teaching them how to be men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's the important part. Yeah. Teaching them how to be real people. You know, I've had countless parents come up to me and say, you know, my son makes his bed every morning. He comes and sees me, he comes and talks to me. His grades are better because it's a standard. Right. Um, and that's kind of what I've always pushed whenever I go into a program. When I got to Rose Hill three years ago was we're building a culture not just you're not just blocking for this year. You are part of the group forever. We sell them like coming back to watch games and stuff, and that's that's what you want. You want to have that family, right? You know, like all those boys can still call me or text me if they need me. That's, that's what's about. And they because I know they'll do it for the next group. They'll carry on the tradition. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about you in five years? Oh man, me in five years. Uh, five years, I'll probably I'm, I'm hoping to still be cutting hair. But maybe not as much. I like the connections I'm making. I want to. I want to spread. I want to diversify. I don't want to just be a barber. I want to be able to put my hands in a lot of things. I want to touch a lot of people's lives. I'm, I'm passionate about a lot of things. One of the things I am very passionate about is cannabis, and eventually, it's going to be legal in the state of Kansas. Yeah. And if that happens in the next five years, which I think it's going to. I'm going to run with that. I'm going to cut hair to help fund that. I'm going to continue to cut hair because my business needs to keep growing. But I want to spread. I want to diversify. I want to get my hands involved in that and really help try to take the stigma away from that as we see it coming across everywhere. Like you walk into a dispensary in Colorado or any of the illegal states and you see Granny Gogo coming out with her bag of goodies. Like suddenly you're like, oh, it's not just skateboard kids and punks. Or emo kids. Right. I'm proud. Email and proud, bro. I'm bringing it back. Yeah. Hey, took, growing this hair honor, out hey, again. Hashtag honorary emo. Took a lot of 12 year old heartache to make that man right there. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know how many times he had to. Oh. Don't get me started. <laughs> Slam his door. <gasps> I hate my dad. <laughs> oh, yelling in your pillow late at night. <laughs> <laughs> my dad hates me. Come on, Rich and black my eyes. <laughs> Can we flash to a moment where I'm just like mascara? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I I went to that church retreat, but like, whatever. (laughs) (laughs) Five years, my youngest is a senior in high school. I'm that close to an empty nest. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That's that's something me and my wife talk about a lot. Mm -hmm. The ability to then go travel. Yeah, don't mess up and put out another one. Fixed. Okay. <laughs> and I couldn't be a bigger advocate for getting um, fixed. For getting for men getting fixed when they want to get fixed. I hear these stories. Oh, my doctor wouldn't let me till we talk to my wife to make sure. Like, no, 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 no. That ain't it. Well, I ain't got a wife, so I'm about to go. Get, <laughs> well, well, what if get someday you want kids? Well, I, I, I. I'm a grown man. Right here decision. and right now, I do not. Right, I have made the decision. I'll adopt. Yeah. Right. Adoption Listen here, great. Doc. It's either you do it, I go grab a pair of scissors. So I'm like, I mean, well, I'm getting snipped. Let's do work. <laughs> it's so open hard. now. <laughs> so painful sounding. It's, scissors. Oh, well, I didn't. Open? I don't have a good vasectomy story. I can tell you that I was miserable. <laughs> Miserable. Yeah. I passed out in the hallway because they didn't like wheel me out or nothing. They just, all right, you can go now. And like, my. Where'd you go, Mexico? (laughs) I I don't even remember the doctor's name. It's here in Wichita, 21st and up there in like 96 in the medical area. Seems shady. And I was the last one. Grove and Murdoch. Yeah. I was the last one of the day, and so I they opened the shaky door, hand. And it's, <laughs> Oops! No, don't well, go. I, I did have to go see a, ther- a, a specialist because my doctor was like, "Oh, my neuropathy in my hands. You don't want me doing it." I'm like, "Hey, whoa, man! Like, <laughs> don't get an erection, John. Right. My name's not John. <laughs> what the hell is John? Oh, uh, uh, sorry, I was talking to myself, sir." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I used to work at Supercar Guys, but it didn't work out, so yeah. I'm doing this. <laughs> Uh, I nice did at Holiday Inn Express. Sure, sure, <laughs> it's like right now, uh, 
the whole world is like, oh, you could be a substitute teacher. Oh, man. State oh, of Kansas. Yeah. What do you have? A high school diploma? Yeah. All it takes. That just came out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, they Wait, literally. Legit? Teacher like, that's short. what yeah, you have to do? Yeah. He's walking. He's Yeah. Bro. They're looking for teachers, man. Like, straight up. Like, Everyone's sick. Yeah. Everyone's sick. There's not they a can't keep at staffing. School. Yeah. Mm hmm. Like literally, and Andover Central right now is crazy with how many students they have in the stay and learn because mm -hmm. they've been in close contact or they've been in contact. Yeah, like three hundred and some students. It's wild. Like like every high school's like that. Rose Z Hill's down too. Zion's daycare shut down for the week. We actually were in the process of switching daycares, so it actually mm -hmm. was like the perfect cut move on. Mm -hmm. But it was like they shut down for a week because of it. Um, we got the email that was like, "Hey." There's a potential that we're going to shut down for five to 10 days or whatever because of staffing. And like, then I was literally listening to these two older ladies that were just like talking. I was, it was at uh, um world market today when you're like, Hey, where are you at? I was standing in line for like an hour. Like just waiting. This oh, lady yeah, world market today was crazy. It was this lady couldn't, she couldn't figure out things like right. her card. She couldn't figure out her email. She couldn't figure out her phone number. Yeah. Anyways, they're just like, start talking about Real life. Like, she was supposed to be at Ross, not world market. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Oops. These aren't flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, well, you know, I'm just bored these days. I, apparently though, I can just walk in and become a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and they started like this conversation about how they just put that out. Where like, you can just literally pretty much walk in and be a sub teacher. Do you have uh, a high school diploma? That's yeah. all it kind of takes now. I it just is. thought of our next video. We just gonna walk in and teach for a yes. day. Oh, teach some I ignorant stuff. You're gonna too. learn yeah. today. Yeah. You're gonna learn today. Hey, <laughs> hey, Ron. <laughs> but lock you talk back? That'd be twenty push-ups, boy. <laughs> hey, you might not be smart, but you will be jacked. <laughs> yes. Get huge. Yes. <laughs> You'll be jacked. God, that would be so scary. Seeing us walk in, subs. I wear suspenders. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and a bow tie. Those are and a bow tie. <laughs> that's scary to think, though. Like your kids just getting. Well, and that's why I said I was telling someone today, like that's, yeah, of that's all scary. the things that we could cut and cut corners on, I don't feel like our children's educators are the ones that we should yeah. be cutting corners on. Yeah, but let's also talk a little bit about education here. Sure. Like, I mean, how, come on, talk like about background fighting a how? fighting a fight with one hand tied behind your back. But also, right. I also wonder how how important it is. Mm -hmm. I have degrees. You know, Air Force pushes you to get them. I got yeah. plenty. I don't use them. I don't use mine. I don't use any of the knowledge. <laughs> well, I'm reminded of a uh, quote from Rick and Morty. Great show. Right. He's, you know, it's just, Rick says, school's not a space for smart people. That's where they go and teach you stuff. Smart people are out moving, going, making things happen. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just and it's like, oh, I mean, there's some truth behind that. There is, yeah. Like, yeah, I can go to school, and unfortunately, in the world we live in, you have to have a degree to do certain things, mm -hmm. right? That doesn't mean you're the most qualified. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean the guy that can't come in off the street who knows this can't come in and just walk circles around you. So, oh, you're, a, right. I have a degree in graphic design, and cool, I've been doing it for 20 years. Who are you going to hire? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, this experience, and that's why a lot of people now coming out of the military, I mean, they'll get they'll get hired over people with degrees. Mm -hmm. um, the my degree, one of my degrees is in technical management. What well, the funny thing is, if you want to go work at Amazon or Google and you want to get that like 250 plus a year, mm -hmm. um, you got to have 10 years experience. So go to college, mm -hmm. right? Get your four year degree and try and go work for Amazon. Well, on, on their little resume thing, on their ad, sorry, it mm -hmm. says you got to have 10 years experience. So now you got to get a four year degree and then go work for 10 years. And that's 14 years we put in to go get that, that job. So I, how, I mean, now I already have experience being in the military, right? I've got the management experience. I even wrote them. I was like, hey, they're like, yeah, perfect. We'll hire you tomorrow whenever you get out, you know? Um, but I'm not going to do that anyway. I think Augie, did Augie get his degree? Does he have audio? He went to college for audio. Went to college. Doesn't yeah. really, I mean, he does use it, but I mean, he's technically a videographer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not a. Audio no, none of us are using our degree. Yeah, yeah. No one's. I mean, no one is really using them. <laughs> if you get, you you did marketing. Mm -hmm. My friend Josh did. Uh, he got a master's in marketing and I want to say business. It might be advertising, marketing, advertising. One of those. Mm -hmm. um, it took him going and not doing marketing and advertising mm -hmm. to eventually get a job at the Mirage. He does. Mm -hmm. He's runs the marketing, I believe, at the Mirage now. Mm -hmm. But he did a job not in, not in marketing to get experience in running teams and doing things like that. And he did that for like six years before he finally actually used his degree 
I don't know. I just have this weird view on education. My my girl's son will come home and, from school and be like, what'd you learn today? Yeah. Be like, well, nothing. I'm yeah. like, good. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's the, uh, I was reading something the other day. It was like, uh, school used to be about building, you know, <laughs> character and building leaders. It's lost that, I think. Yeah. Like, it's lost that, that pull to it because you're supposed to find, you know, people that will stand up for others and, mm -hmm. you know, they'll do things for others and things like that. And I think it's kind of lost that luster. Right. Why, I just, why are we not no teaching connection. anymore? We don't teach taxes. Yeah, why are we, we don't teach, imagine we don't if teach you taught a checkbook? Imagine if you taught like a 10 year old kid from the age of like 10 mm -hmm. to 18, and every, every single year you went into like compound interest, how to budget, how to budget, how, how to, to invest, budget. Yeah, yeah. No, like, not even invest because when I'm 18, I trade. move out on my own, right? I don't need to know how to do anything, I need to know how to budget. How do I live? Yeah. How do I, right. how do I figure out how much money I can spend on groceries this mm -hmm. month? How much, how do I figure all that out? Yeah, and sure, they say they send you to an economics class. Like I remember my high school economics class. So I, we learned about I scarcity. That I remember really my learned. economics class, but I don't remember anything that helped me through it. So though. my high school economics class, it was economics government mixed class. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Shipman made it real clear, real fast. We're gonna do. You're gonna have a project on your own for economics. I don't teach economics. Yeah. Here's your project to do at the end of the year. And then we talked about the JFK assassination. <laughs> for the rest of the year. Jeez. That was it. That was my economics class. So I got teamed up with some girl who we didn't necessarily agree on a lot. Yeah. And uh, we made our make-believe family and all that. Knocked it out like the first, I don't know, six weeks of school and sat there and did nothing for the rest of the year. That was government right there. Solid day at the office. Solid day at the office. And uh, that's uh, our education system, folks. Like... Yeah. What do you remember from high school? I remember, so I, weirdly enough, graduated twice. So I got two education systems. I, I graduated. Ooh. It was not a good thing. Um, so I graduated <laughs> high school in England when I was 15. Oh. 15 years old, graduated, and was expected to know what to do with my life. Sorry. Right? Yep. 15 Don't years old. That? At 15 years old, Don't I graduated. Don't you love that? All right. So <laughs> in England... You actually don't have to, um, you don't have to get like A's, B's, C's, D's. You don't have to pass anything. You just do your time. Keep on going. It's like prison. <laughs> do your time. Do your time. Keep on going. Keep um, on rolling through. And then you, you take, um, I'm trying to remember which one's American, which one's English. GCSEs. You never heard of that, right? No. Cool. Mm -hmm. So that is in England. You take these GCSEs and it's your primary. So it's like English, math, science. I mean, they were pretty easy. So I did those and, and that helps you get into like colleges and stuff like your SATs, ACTs. But then I was like, well, what do I want to do with my life? At 15, do you know what you wanted to do in college? <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do that night other than party. Yeah, exactly. So no. then I ended up moving to the States, worked for my uncle's carpet company for a very short amount of time. I was like, I am not into this manual labor stuff. <laughs> so then went realized that I had to go back to high school to be able to go to college mm -hmm. if I wanted to do that. So then I went again. Man, I was not a good kid in high school. Yeah. I, I found that. yeah, I found, you know, women and Hell yeah. alcohol and, and so yeah, I, I don't remember a lot from Right. My, and that, that's either, always really. that's always been my point is mm -hmm. what you learn in high school is you learn how to use systems right. to then get you the education that you need. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that we don't stress to our kids. Like my son right now thinks he's going to go to college next year and it's going to be like high school was. My son, you know, like it's so much different. Right. So much different. So it really makes the kids who probably should want to go to school not want to go to school. Right. And the people that think they're going to go to school and be awesome at it. Wow. Is that what we're doing now? We're just smashing mugs against the microphone. My apologies. <laughs> That, yeah. folks, is why we can't have anything nice. <laughs> a little aggressive. Something I'm curious please, about please continue. in an American school system, too, is why we don't push kids to do trades. Mm. Well, we push them to go to college, right? Go Because the people be that make the rules have the money. Mm. But trades, like, make some... I've, it's crazy how much... No, I agree. They, they, make, but, they but, control the education system. Right, but in the realm of money, does an electrician make that much money? Like, to the people that make laws... People that have generational wealth, no. So they're still just to help. I, I get treated like to help all the time. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's electricians out there that are, I mean, like a welder. Sure. Making. Good, Good Lord, money. Sure. you can make some money. Cool. Yeah. But again, to the people that are making laws and making everything. What will what happen there? <laughs> Something flickered. <laughs> I got Something shiny. I got to do was yeah. pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That'd be awesome. It's just, you know, I, I often feel like we don't, those, those are jobs people shouldn't desire to want to have. Like right. I'm sitting here thinking, now I wish someone would have told me to be a garbage man in high school. Because, mm-hmm. bro, they they do all right around here. Like, mm-hmm. you're done working at like 2 o'clock in the yeah. afternoon. You've made good money. Like, yeah. But any job that I wanted to do now, that I would be interested in now, definitely did not have anybody pushing me in that direction right. or even know that it was a thing. Right. Same. It's a, I mean, even if you, you talk about trades, I mean, if you consider videography, photography and all that as a, as a trade stuff, I mean, more of creative, but I mean, the money, I mean, the money we make is more than most people make. We, we just heard about a guy that, so it's someone that Taylor knows, um, has moved into a, a different company and it just hired a photographer to do a shoot for a pretty well-known kind of, I guess, is it hunting brand? Outdoorsy. Outdoorsy Outdoors. brand. Outdoorsy yeah. brand. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to give him a free shout out, but sure. yeah. <laughs> this yeah, photographer, this is, this is one day shoot. They're mm-hmm. only delivering 300. Now imagine how many we deliver at like a wedding, for instance, yeah, right? Thousands. Only delivering 300 photos, one day shoot, $30,000. Dear God. Yeah. For one for one day shoot. Now I thought that we oh we had some pretty crazy stories. That thirty thousand yeah. dollars. And he's like, and not doctors do not make thirty thousand no, dollars in a day. No, yeah, no. and they yeah. go to school for eight to twelve years. If, the, the dude straight up is like, hey, I need fifty percent up like up front before this weekend, or I'm not showing up for the shoot. Because, because the last time you paid me fifteen days after I was done. Yeah, and the dude's like, got some. I'll send you seventeen thousand dollars right now. Like they sent the check out. Like. And he showed up. Uh, He's there today. Today's the day. Today's the day. I told I told Taylor. I was like, "Hook me up. I'll go do it for like fifteen <laughs> grand. Said, you ain't gonna send me nothing. I will cut the legs right out from under <laughs> you." Yeah, he says, "Screw Valhalla. Like, <laughs> let me get me on there." <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean, I, yeah, it's just no one. No one talks about that, right? Well, and no one talks and teaches you doing those kinds of things on how right. to know your worth. Because mm-hmm. I feel like the problem we have now is everyone thinks their worth is. Mm-hmm. up here right and they're not willing to do that groundwork yeah but then once you get your to know your your worth is you need to be okay with charging it right like i would be lying to you if i told you there's times i don't feel bad charging people 25 dollars for a haircut right i know it's a good haircut but i didn't i mean it didn't take me long i'm in and out and it's like man and i gotta get better at that no but it's words. but it's not yeah it's right. not it's, even just the the quality of the haircut it's the experience that you're giving too so you're right. not just cutting their hair right it's but again it's it's going back to in my own head knowing my worth and we don't teach like we don't teach teach that at a young age and i also see it i see a lot of people they know their worth on what they don't want when it comes to i'm trying to think how to put it like experiences like you will not talk to me that way i am this person blah 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 Mm -hmm. but then give them a camera or i just i can speak to the camera side because i see how much people charge around here and how good their quality of work is, then all of a sudden they don't know their worth. I had some guy that I know is a good photographer the other day putting that he's going to do these shoots for Valentine's Day for two hours for a hundred bucks. And I'm like, what? It's going to take you probably two hours to edit mm-hmm. or maybe, maybe you're really efficient an hour, but then two hours shoot. I mean, you're looking at like 25 bucks an hour. Which, you know, there's some people, I'm sure that's an amazing amount of money. I, but in but the creative space, I yeah. I know that that it, is. But a lot of people, I seem to be the person that's constantly telling people, like, you are undercharging. You are undercharging. Know your worth. Know your worth. And, oh, we can't get there here. I was like, we're proof you can. And there's plenty of photographers here that are proof that you can do that. So I feel like some people will stand, put their hand up and be like, I know my worth. You will not talk to me that way. You will not act that way around me get sensitive about certain things but when it comes to their actual work they don't know their worth Mm -hmm. and i think that love wichita really do we're gonna stay here forever but i feel like the midwest possibly wichita maybe does that as well well no we're not we're not gonna pay that i mean we did just do a study that said we're the cheapest place of a city this size to live yeah yeah 
if we can nickel and dime it around here, that's every, have a conversation with somebody. Man, it's a really nice shirt. They're going to try and tell you how cheap they got that shirt. Yeah, hundred percent. They're not going to be like, yeah, Tom Ford. Th- this outfit cost me seven bucks. Yeah. But I think one of the reasons for that is that Wichita and in a lot of places in the Midwest, not just Wichita, they don't know the worth. No, I was going to say Wichita video. doesn't know its worth. Yeah, not at all. And and the thing that they're going to realize just in, in our industry, even in, in marketing that you're wanting to go into, how you can always kind of see what's going to happen in the Midwest. I've noticed if you just look at the coast, five years later, it's pretty much going to come here. Right. And if you look at the coast and what they're paying for anything to be online is just it's outrageous and Mm -hmm. it's they're going to have to catch up Mm -hmm. or they're going to get beat so it's good for us Mm -hmm. you know so people will know their worth eventually yeah Yeah. i think that's the uh it's always always the thing that stuck with me with your even from the stuff when you guys first started out um before we knew you before you guys did that photo shoot at the uh what do you call it that's your story Hmm? It's your story. You can call whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, the strongman meet, the uh, middle strongest man thing. Before before I met you there. Yeah. Um, we always would try to tag you guys and like our posts and stuff, and just because we saw you guys were doing like that's dope. Yeah. Like let's let's throw them some just shout out. And, yeah. You know some love. Yeah. Well, I, you know the, the the closest support we get is from people that uh that we don't know. You know more than anything, get more hype from people from we don't know than people that we do know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that couldn't be more true. So that's one of the things I've been trying to do for 2022 is my friends post stuff. And I have made mm-hmm. it a mental effort. I am going to comment. Mm-hmm. I'm not just going to like it. That's easy. We do that. I don't even realize we're doing it. Right. No, I'm going to stop. I'm going to watch what you're doing. And I'm going to comment on it. I'm going to tell you what I think about it. I'm sure. Great. You're you're doing. And, yeah. 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 You've also hey, kind of stepped into more into that social media world now that you've gone down to standard yeah. issue, yeah. cutting down there. Yeah. Like you, I'm sure you've, we just talk about some businesses don't know what's Con- coming. Like you're probably realizing how important it is to uh, absolutely. Be re- I know one one company that we just brought on. Um, one of their things is they want to be relevant, and that is a it's a big deal here. It's you know relevancy, mm-hmm. um, and and once you get down and and you're in there, you're, it's just you right. and and you know the guy that's running standard issue next to you he John, comes in john bacon. a couple hours mm-hmm. you know after the shop opens the uh, barber shop it's just you two and you right. gotta you gotta get we gotta make customers it work in there yeah. we gotta make we gotta it work in there and have a busy day like you did today right absolutely so no, it's working and, and that's and right and that's the hard part though is is you've got mm-hmm. two or three days where you're doing that grind and you're you're just not getting the response you want you're just going mm-hmm. you're just going you're just going and then like today, I didn't show up to work until closer to 10. I'm normally there 9, 15, 9, 30. That's true. Today, I didn't go. I was like, I don't have anything until 11. I'm tired. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. yeah. the gym's been kicking my ass. Yeah, so on, top like, of, right. on top of, you know, what we're, you're building right now. You're, we're also putting in five days a week, and they're not easy days. Right, yeah. right. So then we, so I'm like, all right, cool. I'm go over to Quick Trip. I'm going to get my breakfast sandwich. Like, I'm going to do me this morning. It's going to take me a minute. I don't have anything until 11. My boss calls me. Dave says, hey, I have my boss over here at Fauna Stock. He's going to come see you at 10.30. Oh. All right, well, i got to get back to the shop. i got to get everything going. Like yeah. My schedule, I thought, was one way, and then it took off from that. And then from that point when he showed up about 10.15, 10.20, I, it was just a constant and someone in my chair. Mm-hmm. So today I had no time to build content. I had no time to even pull my phone right. out and look. So then I learned. I was like, I tried yesterday. I should have... Got, I should have snagged this picture. I should have tried to get this, or I should have tried to get that. That way, since I didn't able to get it today, but I still have something, some content I can right. post. Because if it's not, if I'm not on someone's story, I'm not in someone's mind. Yep. Right. And that's what it's that's about. Right. And the hard thing that, and either you've already learned this, or you will. And it can also relate to many when you're selling cars. Like you'll get so busy mm-hmm. that then when you're not, and you should be posting. You just want to take that break. You're that, like, no, that's, yeah. that's exactly you're what like, happens. man. I just like, I'm just gonna chill today. Yeah. But really, that's when you should. Yeah. That's you should a sign. Mm-hmm. You should be posting. go make some content. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, go make go make some content. Go do something. It's a tough. You're bored anyway. Consistent. Yeah. yeah. No, the, the the good news though, like on days I'm not busy, I don't like. I'm downtown Wichita. I'm, yeah. Put the hoodie on. Grab a stack of cards. Grab some stickers. I'm gonna go find somebody. 
I'm going to meet some friends that day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They might not be friends when I meet them, but they're, I mean, when we're done. We're going to talk. I'm going to hand you some cards. I'm yeah. Gonna yeah. Talk you up. I'm going to get you in the shop. Yeah. That's the hard part. That's the part that gets lost. I think yeah. when you walk in, you walk in a random business and I'm going to hear somebody, I'm gonna sell somebody, you somebody's, somebody's, yeah, somebody's probably going to know who you are. Right. Yeah. On top of that, just because of the person that you are of network so well with people that just people have people in the chair. Right. You know, even on days when you're not posting stuff, you're marketing. Right. Sitting yeah. on that. Cause you all, all three of us are just walking, talking billboards. Right. A hundred percent. So, I mean, yeah, I yeah, know it's like it, jumping into, um, something that you're passionate about. Like you get that, we get that. Like it's, it's definitely a, um, we went through when I jumped out of, uh, working at a car dealership to like, okay, now we're going to actually start this thing. I remember hearing conversations around me, uh, because I had a lot of negative people around me that was like, literally like this dude's going to fail. Oh, like this is not going to work. This is not like, I heard these conversations and then a buddy of mine, I just met up with two days ago. He'd been spent six years with this company, brought them a lot of, um, a lot of success. And he, the, the struggle that these people had was like the off our office was here. There's a wall of like single pane glass and the conference room. And this conference room literally was like where they had these conversations thinking that we couldn't hear them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, some smart people. He heard an hour long nice. conversation talking about how trash he was, <laughs> how backstabbing he was, how he was going to fail, how he did not qualify for this new position. <laughs> and it, what I remember having a conversation with him like literally two days ago, we met at the Monarch, Monarch was the weight that got lifted though. Like, okay, you're taking on like your dream. Like this, you're stepping out after something that you've actually longed to do for a long time. Yeah. It's a feeling. Isn't it? So it's like, that's that one. Everybody saw that, right? Yeah. It I'm happened. not tripping. It's lightning. Yeah, it's, 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 that one. it's the faulty. It, it, it's probably is the storm outside. Oh, that is it. Uh, the wind. I saw s- snow was happening in your neighborhood. <laughs> snow right now? <laughs> yeah. No, bro. It's been, it was snow when we showed up. Yeah. Right. I brought the forerunner. Yeah. <laughs> But I remember uh, we, we were talking, and it's like it's such a a mix of things, right? Mm-hmm. So you're scared in the sense of like, okay, I'm on my own now. I'm doing this. Like I I have to build this brand. I have to grow this. Mm-hmm. But also you're like, dang, I didn't realize how much like pressure was on me because like mm-hmm. the world said this, the my my bosses said this, mm-hmm. or um, and even just like in the exit when you hear people like. Yeah, he's gonna fail, and it's a it's a mix of like self doubt's a, a bitch. Yeah, and all yep. it takes is someone making that comment. Okay. You're gonna yeah. fail, and now I'm gonna question myself. Yeah. Yeah. All it takes is that little seed, right? Mm-hmm. Because yeah. I can sit here and tell you oh, I'm gonna go kill it. I'm yeah. gonna go kill it. Yeah, and then it turns into am I convincing myself, or am I convincing you? Right. And I remember I I specifically remember like having the attitude of like, screw them, I'm gonna kill it. But I literally was like, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to kill it. Like mm-hmm. I remember we talked about it at one of the last episodes where my first vlog of me being like, Hey, we're starting this thing. Right. The video was awful and I I have not <laughs> deleted it. It's archived, but it's so nobody sees it, but I have not deleted it. So I can go back and be like, damn, I sucked for a while. Like, that is what I started with. And then I look at some of the recent things, even just these podcasts, mm. like it's a podcast. Like I watch Joe Rogan's podcast. I'm like, our video looks better than Joe Rogan's <laughs> podcast. And I love listening to Joe Rogan. Like it's, but I mean, I remember like looking back and be like seeing the growth over the years. And, and then I like, Oh yeah, those guys said we were going to fail. Like those guys that are successful and they're mm-hmm. killing it mm-hmm. and they're trapped. Like they're literally trapped in like the industry and that's what, that's why those people like come over and say like, Oh yeah, he's going to fail because they got nothing. They got nothing else to, nothing else to do. Yeah. So a wise man back in like the 19, 1800s <coughs> said, haters going to hate dude. Haters <laughs> going to hate. And then uh, a wise woman said, shake it off. Shake it off, dude. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. Sing it, please. So, <laughs> what I what I tell people when I I I coach a few guys and I a lot of people always ask me questions about the gym. And what they always ask me is mm-hmm. and then I'm not making any progress, I'm not making any gains. So like what I'm trying to do right now is cool, scroll to the bottom of your Instagram page. 
<laughs> Scroll to the bottom of it. Yeah. Look at you then. Whatever it was you're doing, whether it was videos, mm-hmm. I got some haircuts in here that I thought were the shit. Mm-hmm. And now I look at him like I wouldn't have paid for that. <laughs> somebody did though. But somebody yeah. did. We're always going to pay. And, yeah. and the same can be true hey, whether, whether we're going to look at our physical fitness, our mental fitness, yeah. how we've grown, whatever way we've grown. I mean, social media is bad at a lot of things. One thing mm-hmm. it's good at is it documents Archiving. everything. Yeah. That shit will humble you quick. It will. Yeah. Like, it will. Quick. like I look at a, a picture here um, squatting. And I'm big excited, and I remember how sore I was, and I was cock the walk. I'm over here with my coach doing 400 pounds, like, ooh-wee. And I'm like, I have made some game. I mm-hmm. have went somewhere. We have done something, and we yeah. do. Perspective forgets, because all it takes is someone to say, you're not that strong. Mm-hmm. You can't do that. And you're like, if you're strong and you're solid-minded, you're like, mm-hmm. watch this. If you struggle, if you're on a bad day, yeah, that comes back. Yeah, that little seed comes back and it crawls in there, and it, mm-hmm. and yeah, man, it for life. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's the worst thing in the world. But yeah. it's, it's got the thing is, is these things got you places. Right. When I think about, but you know, I've, I think I've always been at like a hundred posts on my Instagram because. I go back and I delete old ones or archive them. Yeah, because I'm the same way. I'll go back and look at them. Still need them there. Yeah, no, exactly, and when I sit there and I look at some of the ones that I'm like, these are bad, mm-hmm. right? Those got us jobs, right? They got yeah. us money. There is a magazine in there, like not to, there's a relevance to this, not to blow myself up, but I'm now officially in a published photographer in a magazine in there has a picture that I know I can now do better a hundred <laughs> times better to the point where I told them that I want to do the exact same shot. Better. But better, but better. Yeah. you know they, what I mean? Like, no. I mean, they want to do it, but, no. uh, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. It. you know, like yeah. there's, but that got us work and yeah. that got us good money. Yeah. But then I look at it a year, I think, what was it? Two or one? It's like a year, maybe two, one, one year later. One. And I'm like, that's, that's not good. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with a haircut. You could do the same thing with your, your sales approach or you in the gym. You mm-hmm. know, you could do the same thing with or even video. even things that you say to a student, like a, a teammate or something. Mm-hmm. You're yeah. like, dang, I would have better advice or I would have yeah. like taught them this. Oh, yeah. but, but, but the thing is, is ultimately mm-hmm. when that happens and mm-hmm. you look back and you say you can do better, what has happened within that year? Right. Like, you have mm-hmm. grown. Yeah. Like it's a beautiful thing, but yet we focus on it in such a negative way sometimes. And it's like, well, it shouldn't be negative. It should yeah. be positive. It should be positive. You grew. When I was talking to that buddy that we met up with, uh, Noah at the art, the monarch. He was like, uh, I was like, I don't know what next, what the next year holds. I don't know what it's going to look like in 2023. He's like, growth is what it looks like in 2023. Growth is what it looks like at the end of 2022. He's like, ever since I've seen you guys, like since you left working with me, you guys have just grown. And sometimes it just takes that perspective of somebody else, somebody else around you being mm-hmm. like, yo, you, I love seeing you grow. And I'm like, I've grown. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I have grown did that? because you're on this like daily grind. You're mm-hmm. like, I'm showing up every day and you're like, how do I get better? How do I get better? How do I get better? Sometimes you forget to look back and be like, I've gotten better. You know, no, it's, it's true. And I think Matthew McConaughey probably put it best. When, I think it was his Oscar speech or whatever. And he talks about like, who do you want to be in five years? Like, oh. I'm, I, you know, I want to be, you know, what I'm going to crush. I'm going to ruin this, but like yeah. he's chasing himself yeah. five years and he's never going to catch him up. But if you, if to really see how true that is, if you look in the past, mm-hmm. you see that you've, you've caught up that person that you're chasing, but now that person is five more years ahead, ahead right. of you. Mm-hmm. And in five years, you're going to look back at the, the person that was chasing and you're going to be like, well, that person's trash mm-hmm. in comparison yeah. to what I am now. Now I got to keep chasing, keep chasing. Yeah. And I, my personal opinion is I want to grow until I am in dirt. Yeah. Well, then I'll grow, grow a tree. Grave. Grow to the grave. Then bro. I'll grow a tree. Well, I said it uh, the other day. If I'm not growing, I'm dying. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. That, talk, that, yeah. that brings me to a good point. I want to go around. Like, what's your favorite quote? Because mm-hmm. oh. we talk about quotes and Matthew McConaughey mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah. What is your well, favorite quote? Well, well, let's segue into this. Uh, Let's on go. top of this, um, but like just the same kind of things we're just talking about. Um, you know, I mean, I think I made a post about it too on Instagram one time. It was like, uh, 
Um, I was always told I was too small, not strong enough, um, not more, not athletic enough, not a good enough to play college football. Um, even doubted by like my, uh, you know, people I thought were closest to me. You know, um, always, you know, not you're not gonna go play football in college. You're just kid from Rose Hill. Oh, uh, you won't start at TCU. You won't play at TCU. You're not kid from you're just kid from Kansas. You're not gonna be that. And uh, that's the same thing kind of drove me into um, my everyday life too at work um, and my everyday every day at the gym. It's like that's boy, it's kind of in that little seed that's just always been there now. And it's just you know it's gonna stay there forever as like a driving force behind the dark side. Right. Yeah. Um, but uh, favorite quote: uh, "Hope is a good thing." Red. Sometimes the best of things. No good thing ever died. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Straight out of Shawshank. Man, yeah. Shawshank. I don't. I. You can't even give me a minute on that one. I've got a lot. Mm. Of, oh, I got that one flowing, and percolating now. Yeah, I've got. A, I've got a lot in there. Um, yeah. Give me a minute. I'll. I'll come back to that one because I got a lot of couple good ones on top. I'm like trying to remember what my grandpa always said. Mm-hmm. I don't have the wording quite in my head right. Mm-hmm. You got one, boo. Dude, I. I don't have a like specific quote. What I do have is a lot of um, Denzel Washington quotes, like just things in my head or Will Smith. Like he gets out there like on the side of like, just, just be who you are. Like, this is not a quote. I'm not quoting anybody right now, but like, just be Will Smith. Yeah. You're making a quote, right? I'm I'm making quotes. This is Taylor trickle says, yeah. Quoting somebody. Yeah. Probably George Washington, (laughs) (laughs) but just, just, be confident in being who you are and don't be afraid of failure and learn from failure. And I think I was always so afraid of failure and that came a lot from, you want to call it the emo days, like the daddy issues or whatever you want to Come say. Iris and black <laughs> my eyes. But I, but literally my dad was always like the one telling me I was going to fail. Like he was that person. And I look at his life right now and I'm like, bro, like you don't have any relationship with any of your kids. Like nobody, nobody really cares where you are. Like, and I'm just like, you're telling me that I was going to fail. Like my kids know where I'm at. Like my kids know I'm always where, like I am always here. Right. And I remember literally learning like, okay, here's the list of things of who he was. And here's a list of things of what I'm not going to be. And so I remember like those kind of quotes of like, you know, find who you are be confident in who you are and i just always remember like i i'm like i'm gonna be a present father like my entire life like my kids are never gonna have to have never to gonna wonder. wonder where dad's at yeah and that is uh, that is something that's just stuck with me of like that's not a quote at all and i'm just going on a little uh, a little rant right now but it's literally like do you boo <laughs> like it. it's like your it. podcast bro so <laughs> yeah. i mean you want. but it's literally like one of those things that i um I remember so many times conversations. My my dad would be like, we were out in the shop one time. And this is a quote, I guess I would say. And we're out there working on the Camaro. He says, you know, your mom and I are going to get a do- divorce because of you. Whoa. That's a quote right there. That's Man. a quote. Print that. And I was like, I should put that on a shirt. I'm like I'm emotional as fuck. Like I am like emotions yeah. like my true it like my oldest son is me like emotions he was literally getting ready to go to spend the night at his friend's house and his neighbor buddies came over and see if he could play and he was really hurt that he just had to say like actually i'm not gonna be here like i'm gonna so i was like yep that's me that's, <laughs> that's I. but i remember that that one quote right there that i heard from my dad like stuck with me for the rest of my life and I didn't even realize it for a long time, but I remember him specifically saying that your mom and I are about to get a divorce because of you. And I was like, what do you mean? Or I think I said, why? And I, I remember I was in, we were in Sanford. I was in kindergarten, kindergarten. My dad told me this. That's rough, man. I'm sorry that you had to deal with yeah. that. That's rough. It's clearly he was, was going through some stuff to yeah, blame that yeah, right. on. Yeah. And he literally kid. like, and I didn't tell my mom till like years later because I thought it was because of me. Right. And they did get a divorce. They moved on, and and she was like, "No," but he said it was because I always lied and because I always complained. And I was like, so I remember not complaining. I remember every time I got ready to like, 
I don't like green beans. I would not say I don't like green beans. Right. I would suffer and eat the green beans. <laughs> I still don't like green beans the to this best day. Green but... beans I've ever had, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and I just I more remember green that. beans, please. And so what it did do is it made it stick in my head of like everything you say to your kids matters, and people around you freaking matters. Yeah, like I know it might slip out of your mouth. And if it slips out of your mouth, then apologize. Like, mm-hmm. like I didn't mean that. Like, you know how many conversations I've had with my kids? But like, I didn't mean that. Like, I'm sorry that I said that to you. And it's one of those things that I remember how a conversation when I was in kindergarten stuck with me till I, like, till literally I talked to my mom and I was like married by then. Right. You were a grown man. And I was like, I mm-hmm. thought maybe I actually caused my parents to divorce. That's crazy. That's terrible. Part of the thing that you just said about, you know, what you say to your kids and stuff matters mm-hmm. is, so I have two quotes that matter most to me. One of them was Air Force related that I've since then turned more to the civilian world. And that is uh, when I was real new into the Air Force, um, someone told me what you say or do to the people around you, just like what you say or do to your kids can affect the Air Force for 20 years. And like, how so? Okay, so if a brand new airman comes into the Air Force and they retire, what you say or do can affect the Air Force. If they become a Chief Master Sergeant, which is the highest rank that you can get enlisted, and you treat them like crap, and they think that that's acceptable, they're gonna be up there making policies and doing terrible things, and they're right. gonna make the Air Force a terrible place. Mm-hmm. Treat them well, Right then, the, and then now in my new job, which my new job is solely about people, mm-hmm. it's all it is. It's their welfare, their benefit, morale, etc. I've come to realize that what you say or do can affect people, not the Air Force, because who cares? Mm-hmm. Air Force will go on once people get out of the Air Force, but it can affect people for five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, all until you talk to your mom, can affect them negatively or positively. Absolutely. And, and that is how I have lived my life for a very mm-hmm. long time for the Air Force. And now recently, mm-hmm. I mean, I have unknowingly, but re- like recently realized that it translates well to just life. Mm-hmm. And the other one that I love is this too shall pass. Yes. I've always used it and, until it's funny. I bring it up now because I was watching TikTok yesterday and that exact quote was on there and it was by Tom Hanks was using it. So I've always used it when Taylor's going through something tough or I'm going through something tough or anyone around me. I'm like, this too shall pass. Mm-hmm. But the way that Tom Hanks used it was it's for everything. If you are going through a rough time, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. If you are on top of the world and everything is going great, this too shall pass. Because there will always be bad and there will always be good and it's always going to pass. It's going to go ebbs and flows, ups and up and down, etc. I've never heard of it used for the positive Mm -hmm. until yesterday. And I was like, dang, that makes sense. You know, that is my, that is probably my favorite quote. And it's got me through a lot. Like when you sit there and you bring things in intrinsically and you understand that you're going through these emotions, but this too shall pass. Mm. You can do a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's my internal gym. There you go. For sure. Do you remember yours yet? Dwayne the Rock Johnson in your head every day. Yes. Focus. shall pass. (laughs) Focus. If you can smell. What the rock is cooking. <laughs> That's his quote. <laughs> no, uh, I don't want to do my grandfather discharge. I can't quite remember his quote. It was yeah. pretty comical. But uh, I have two. They're both from former coaches of mine. Uh, my current coach, Stacy Burr, she has a quote. It's, I can, I am, and I will. Mm. I can do this. I am good enough to do this. I will do this. Mm. That resonates with me a lot because I am my biggest doubter. Like I am yep. my biggest hater. I am. Same. For sure. I mean, I will get in my head. I will whatever it is. Whether it's, you know, before we opened the shop, like I was a wreck. Yeah. Like I didn't know how to feel. I didn't know what was going on. Like I was. Yeah. And I just had to realize, like I can do this. I've done this. Oh yeah, you doubted do yourself this. so much leading up to that. And I just kept like nightly conversations where you'd be like, I don't know if I'm gonna be good enough for this. Like. And then it just every day, keep going. Sorry. Yeah. And uh, the other one, JP Price is my former strength coach, and he he has a quote: "Be the thermostat. Be mm. the energy that you want to have in the room. You like control that. that. 
That's so huge. if you need the hype, if you want there to be hype, and that and that and that phrase is what caused me to start mm-hmm. Squat Sunday. Mm-hmm. So at, at my former gym, I started Squat Sunday. Me and my wife, it was like, hey, we're all competitors. We're all in prep. We all have the same meet coming up on mm-hmm. Sundays. We're going to show up and we're going to squat together as a team, and we're going to bring it. <coughs> we're going to bring the hype. Yeah. You got something. I got you. You need something. I got you. I'll load the weight. Sit down. You just lift it. Like mm-hmm. we got it. And I, I always try and be that in the gym. Now I set the tone. Mm-hmm. Yep. Do my best. Set the tone. Yeah. Pets on your lifters for sure too. Absolutely. It's I, beautiful. I, I, and it's it's a big deal to like we always talk about this is um, building culture. So like the culture that you want to be inside of, like you have to like feed into that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people around us are like, they don't understand that culture. They don't know that culture. They're not used to that culture. So it's, I think everyone at this table is literally like, this is what I want to live inside of. So maybe I have to be the one to actually create it. Mm -hmm. And one day we can be like, dang, like I'm in the middle. Like I can say right here at this table, we're in the middle of like, we're all living and breathing this. It's not like, Okay, Huck has to just like get us there, like or right. Shane has no. to like mm-hmm. get us there. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just like we're all sitting here and we're in it, right? And so then the people are around day to day, like we have to teach that. Mm-hmm. And if that's what we're gonna want to live in the middle of, like we're kind of creating that. Yeah, that's why what you say or do can affect people for 20 years, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You set that culture. When you leave, the next person does it. Maybe they make it squat Saturdays or right. lunge Mondays or, you know, whatever <laughs> right. it is. But if you if you set that standard and that standard is excellence and, and excellence to you as being a team, then. Uh, and, that, and, that was, and that was to me, that's what I live for. And I'm able to best get that in the yeah. gym. I'm best able to translate that back to the gym. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I tried to do that at the barber shop. I tried to do that at my shop. Like, you walk in. Hey, man, how you doing? How's it going? Mm-hmm. You might have been having a terrible day, but you are in here now. We are going to have a good day. I'm going to be the thermostat. I'm going to make you – either you're going to sit there and hate being in here because I'm so mm-hmm. hyped up and ready to give you the best service of your life, and I want you to matter, and I want you to enjoy what you're doing, or you're going to come and have the best time of your life. Yeah. Yep. I like that. But it's like anybody coming in, living – like being under like a positive energy. Like how do they walk away being like, da that sucked like right like yeah. people feel it like even if like they're in their most like de- the thing is like in both of your scenarios like you're just in front of so many people all the time mm-hmm. every lifestyle every upbringing and like you have the power to like maybe be the only smile they saw that day or maybe the only like positive energy they even felt in a year yo mj said it michael jordan and uh the last dance he, I don't remember, I don't know the quote so I can't use the quote but I can't take a night off mm-hmm. that dad worked three Saturdays in a row to get the money to buy this ticket to bring his kid and that's the night I take the night off that's the night I half-ass it yeah can't do that no man I only get one we only get one shot to get our client right yeah. mm-hmm. we only get one shot to tell people who Valhalla is we only have one shot to tell people who blaze is and when you mess it up because you didn't want to be the thermostat, you didn't want to set the tone. You mm-hmm. want to let somebody else dictate how that was going to go. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, even on the business side, then you don't get a repeat customer. You don't sell a car. We don't get repeat customers or mm-hmm. referrals. I mean, it's just, right. like, mm-hmm. yeah. you got to set the tone. Got to. Yeah. And every one of us, like, I think we have like, obviously the mentality of like, we're building a business. We're building like something big. Like we're trying to make a living. But I also know like every single one of us have like such a heart for people. Mm. And that's something that um, people can get so like busy in the day to day and uh, miss that side of things Like they can just have conversation. And, and me even being an introvert, it can be like, I, I would much rather just like not talk to anybody. I'm going to walk in a quick trip and I'd rather not have the guy say, welcome mm-hmm. to quick trip. Like mm-hmm. I get it. Like it's like, Thanks. Like, Mm -hmm. but I also realized the value of like, um, every single person is walking through something and every conversation that you have is for a reason. And, and I think that I value that a ton of all of us right here right now that have like, we have a passion and a desire to like put a positive, like 
experience in people Mm -hmm. and a positive energy. Like when I want people, every one of us, I know like when we leave a room or they leave our room, like it's literally like we want them to walk away feeling better than when they walked in. Like they have like, Oh yeah, they feel recharged. They feel energy. They're like, I am going to be a better dad. I am going to be a better husband, a better employee, a better business owner, like whatever it is, like they're going to be better because I just came out of this energy. That's like, Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. For sure. No, I, I totally get what you're saying. That, and that is contagious. Mm-hmm. And if I can make a guy leave the chair and he's amped up and ready to go and he goes back to work. Yeah. And then he spreads it in there. And then, you know, it's like, you know, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah. How far does this go? <laughs> how far does my good day, how far does it reach? Pay it yeah. forward. Exactly. You're talking about, <laughs> I don't know why this is making me laugh. <laughs> you talking about quick trip. And the welcome makes me think of Ross. Have you ever gone to Ross and they they have to yell it so loud Look because the Ross. because the <laughs> counter is so far from the front right. door and every Ross I'm gonna move the mic, but every time it's like Welcome to Ross. <laughs> like, you're like, so you're like, hey, you're not gonna Thank yell you. it back, you Thank know? You. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah. I, my yeah. response always is. You too. Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> I just run and hide behind the really cheap clothes, so no one bothers me. Oh, I go I go straight up British accent, and I go loud with it. Hi, right, good night, Mike. All right, how you doing? <laughs> yes, yes, just, yes. They're yes. just like, oh. what time are we sitting at? We're Ooh, at two we hours and ten minutes. Look at us go. We cannot Man. leave this podcast and leave the people wanting the story of how like Blaze h- almost killed me. So we promised oh, yeah. them the story. Oh, we're going to give that. it to them. Yeah, let's let's talk Bring about that. All right. Um, yeah, so let's just jump into it. Um, well, if you're listening <laughs> and not watching, I'll describe Blaze real quick for you. 6'5". At the time, what were we, like 396, 392? Oh, uh, it was 407. Okay. Four, uh, <laughs> 407, 407, 407 pounds. pounds. And there was not a lot of jiggle. No. Uh, <laughs> we had no went jiggle. through about, I would say, a good, a good 14-week prep. Uh, that yeah. was totally brutal. Like, well, it was, and it was for fourteen weeks. He did every. He did the strongman competition did. every Sunday. I Ooh. made him do it every Sunday. Oh, wow! That way, by the time we got to the competition, oh shoot, he's done this fourteen times. Yeah, yeah. So he is confident. He is large. In case you don't know what he looks like, if you're not watching, you're only listening. That's Blaze. This is who's coming at Shane. Yeah. Or uh, uh, the other side of this is just. If you've seen the Avengers, the green guy. Yeah, yeah. the green guy. <laughs> the green so dude. let's let's talk about let's talk about my my gym journey to set the tone of, of, of who I was at the time. <laughs> I had been cutting just ridiculously. I mean, yeah, you were, this you were this super, was this was too much yeah, to the point thin. where like my face was kind of sinking in. I'd just gone through my divorce, so I was just like in the gym two times a day. Mm. I was. 162 pounds, 9% body fat at the time. Sex appeal. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I was ripped and I was making them drip. You know, like, I mean, it was like, yeah. Now I've put the the COVID 15 (laughs) on. But (laughs) but yeah, so I was a smaller version of myself. (laughs) (laughs) We'll say that. Uh So we got 407. Good for docking. Yes, extremely. (laughs) Like, 100%. Those those, those sandy stores. Yes. So, so we've got someone that is almost 300 pounds heavier than I am. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. What was, and, and this was, uh, this was, yeah, this is the first time I'm running at you was. Yes. Before I had the semi attached to my back. Yes. This, so the, yes. Uh, wasn't, this wasn't the one where you had a semi attached. No, no, no. This one. Um, what, what is it? What is it called? Uh, it's, it's a yoke, yoke carry. Yoke carry. So mm-hmm. basically like the best way to, yes. I can explain it is it's like you have a, a short pull-up bar it's a att- giant apparatus yeah attached to your shoulders yes okay. with just and hundreds it, of pounds worth of weights yeah we had seven at the bottom we had, yeah we had 780 pounds on it that day yeah for so the big guys so let me do some quick math here mm-hmm. 407 1200 plus 1200 pounds coming at yeah you. 1200 pounds you're quicker than math than i mm. Um, well, right, he's so. been waiting to tell this story. Yeah. No. So <laughs> con- continue. Now, so now the scene is it's set. So great. The scene I'm is outside set. with a camera yeah. in my hand, taking photos yeah. of someone I don't know that yeah. is a large. And everybody dude. before I had gone had you know kind of sliding in there and you know stopping right there and yeah. So you were in a good safe spot, for sure. Um, we had so I texted him like we're going a lot shorter than I did in practice, like and it's, so, a, lot, and it's a lot shorter. A lot shorter. And he was like, yeah. We did that on purpose. And right. Like, like oh. yeah, man, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. We did this on purpose. <laughs> yeah. 
And and he like he like I told him my times like we were doing like you know thirty second twenty four seconds we were getting pumped for this time, um we were going we're, he didn't tell me we were going thirty yards uh, right. in practice, <laughs> <laughs> and that wasn't what we were doing in the game. No, well, I didn't look. I just like yeah, just, and uh, it ended up being like less than half. Yeah, was it like sixteen? Sixteen? Yeah, I think it was sixteen feet. Sixteen feet, maybe something, something like, like that. that. I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> and um. And everybody kind of, kind of was, you know, kind of chill on it. And I was getting up there, and I, Shane, I see Shane. I'm like, all right, I'm going to Shane. I'm going, I'm going. I was like, I'm, the I'm man going. with the cam. He had, yeah. he, had, he had sunglasses on. He was standing out there taking pictures, like right where the garage is, and like, like getting me set up. And I look at him, I see him, and I'm like, I'm going to there. That's my. That's I don't know where the line is from here, but I'm going to there. <laughs> and and I just, and they blew the whistle, and I'm, I, I picked this thing up, and without like. No tilt, no, just just straight line, just beamed it toward him. He's looking at me like this. He's like, he just, <laughs> you ever seen uh, Godzilla where he comes up from the camera? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he does one of these, and I, I saw I saw his eyes behind the lenses. He was like, oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, oh, he, he falls back, shuffle, like, yeah. shuffle, 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 shuffle. He falls back, does like uh, the Tony Hawk Pro Skater from two. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> So I had said getting I, out of there. I had I just walked not, towards. Him. I understood that I was too close. I had. <laughs> like, I understood I had I, gone too far. No, it's I had I had been too close <coughs> on every single person prior to him. Yeah, but I had set my pace on how I could back up, keep the focus, yeah. and take the photo. Only difference is, is this 407 pound man could move the weight so much faster that all of a sudden the pace that I was setting to back up, my mind was like, well, I can't go that slow because he's going to catch up with me. And so then I tried to go faster and there was rocks and then I, yeah, I was Yeah, almost. he can close that gap pretty well. Yeah. The, video, the video is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the seven second video. Is not yeah. It's like 10 seconds of glory. You just see me put down the weight and Shane like catching himself yeah. doing yeah. a, doing a ramp. Yeah. So that is, uh, that is the story of how yes. my now very good friend yeah. and someone I didn't know yeah. almost and just trampled me well, like a rhinoceros. Yeah. Well, and then this it brings the second time, which is even more fun. I dabbed you up after the second time yeah. with the semi. Yeah, just yeah. just ripping a semi, like yeah. a grown yeah. man pulling a semi towards me. Which I mean, I've done that a couple times. It's yeah, my, it's but my, not it's my like favorite picture. Anybody in a picture? I think it's the coolest yeah. picture. I love it. Like, it is super. Cool. I know. Like, and the funny thing is, yeah. you know, you know, you like that picture. <laughs> Everybody that <laughs> follows know, you I knows know. you like that picture. And we love that picture too. So cool. It is. It's a great picture. But you don't have to tell us. You he like falls that asleep at night. Like, <sighs> what are you talking about? It's above him. Miss you, yeah. Peter. You think, you think, <laughs> yeah, miss you, Peter. Peter, miss you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh God, you look uh, so shiny today. But to bring back to what I said before, now I know yeah. I could actually take that photo better. Yeah. It's a crazy, crazy world. We well, are like. Let's rope you up mm-hmm. to a semi. Now I'm. Now you're talking my language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Foreplay. Let's tie him. <laughs> up. Yes. We definitely. Um, um, <laughs> we definitely got a lot more we can talk about. We're gonna have to oh, do this again. Yeah, we're gonna have to we are. Uh, here. Yeah, we are out of camera going. time. We, we yeah, this camera is at like a three percent right out. now. Yep. Yo, yeah. all right. We keep this ball yeah, rolling. Yeah, we were going to say like we're, I just scratched the surface. We had a whole conversation about what we were going to talk about. Yeah, we yeah. are. We are, that's we're, awesome. I thought we were just starting. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. It's like I, I know there'll be like a you know part two, part three, part oh we'll just keep part it going. Million. We'll just we'll do new guests and then after that one we'll just do another one with with well, you two. One Hello, day we'll boys. <laughs> one day hey, we'll all be recorded. like old and gray yeah. and we'll be like. Hey, oh, yeah, this is, this is, I had this written up in 2021. We're finally getting to it. Yo. Uh, well, I think my camera is probably going to die, so I'm going to let yeah. you yeah. say goodbye to the world today. Cool. Well, thank you guys all for tuning in. This is uh, always such a cool journey. Um, we never really know what's going to be said. We never really know what's going to happen. And uh, there's a couple times tonight I was going to cry. I'm just like <laughs> talking about emotion and then my emo self and yep. <laughs> cut my wrist and block my eyes. <laughs> Third time. And uh, <laughs> yeah. So. I'm still bad for you. <laughs> classic. <laughs> Such a classic from 2020. 20, 2020 was wild, bro. <laughs> Uh, Avril did drop her new single. Yeah, so sure did. Album's coming well, you, out. Yeah, you, I, I said it to you like, uh, I've been jamming that all day. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting right now is like nobody re- says like a release date because no. they're just like, we don't really know. When's so the, like, Mod Sun's about to, no, Mod Sun's working on another one. 
Avril has one coming any day now. MGK any day now. Yeah. I think like, Wheezy just dropped four or six tracks to the new one he's getting ready to drop. Are they dropped, really? He's dropped tracks? I didn't see that. Yeah, I saw something. Oh, his out, his new album looks so dope. Oh, I'm just like, I'm excited that, so Avril, everything that she's working on, she's like, it's a pop punk record. Yeah. It's a pop punk. It's under DTA. It's under Travis Barker. Like, yeah. Like, tra thank you, Travis Barker, for saving you the punk us. genre. Like, he's you like, yeah, that can be, a, I'm just going to go on all night long. Sure. But <laughs> yeah. Travis literally Back is like saving camera. my entire aesthetic of life. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you guys for being on tonight. I know Thanks we've, for been, having us for we've sure. been excited to have you on. And uh, been planning for so long. Yes, it's been. <laughs> the next one will be better. I can tell you that already. Like, I already have so many good ideas. Uh, there's like bullet points. I bet points you do. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah this, this, this has been fun a trade show <laughs> this is an acupuncture spot that we can practice at home <laughs> <laughs> alright lay out on the table and uh, we're going to try this right here this what is, is the, turn into a how do video what is quick. the durability this of this is table? a needle <laughs> <laughs> isn't acupuncture you just stick a bunch of needles in random places well, I don't think they're quite don't random think, yeah I don't uh, think you want to do random wherever you want <laughs> <laughs> I mean I was going to say for you yeah you can do that <laughs> I am down next episode Part two, acupuncture by Taylor. Huck has already uh, said he would be down. Well, what's Pin a ZJ? Me Pin me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you guys so much for watching today. We've got uh, more coming in the future, so we'll see you guys later. Peace be the journey. Thanks, man. Peace be the Should journey, Should we dance guys. again? Which one is it? Top, right here. Ready to go. go. My camera's probably yeah. off and I'm uh, dancing uh, for nobody. Uh, dance. Uh, 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 oh. Uh, when did we get ice cream?